Hello and welcome to Build Up to a Good Game. It's West Ham United against Fulham. We're an hour and five minutes away from kickoff, which means official liners will be with us in a few minutes' time. However, it's believed there could be a formation change as well as a few personnel changes from David Moyes this afternoon. Gonzo, how is oneself? Oh, I'm very well and intrigued, actually. Now you said that. Intrigued. Tell you. Yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm nervous. There's a lot of biding on this game. Um, I'm a bit excited. Because there's a lot of riding on this game, we could yeah, go yeah. six with the win, and I think that would be, you know, if you said to me five games to go in the Premier League, you'll be six. Oh, pff, yes, please, I'll have that. Obviously, it doesn't tell the whole story, which is that we've got Liverpool, Man City coming up. That we've got, we've played a game or two more than the people below us in the table. But as we've just seen yesterday, another reminder that actually a game in hand usually, like I said, I can be a bit biased. Hey, West Ham got a game in hand, we'll be all right, but. We've got the points. There's no yeah. guarantee that these teams are going to pick up points in these games in hand. We've just seen last weekend Chelsea drop points at Sheffield United. Yesterday, Brighton dropped points at Burnley. So you, you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, all I know is that we need to get a win today. It's, it's crucial because if we lose today and then go out on Thursday, there it's going to be hard not to have this deflated is the season over feeling come Friday morning? Um, so I think, but we get a win. My pecker's going to be up. Good, good. And, and we do play Chelsea. That, that's the other thing um, to remember because they've got a couple of games in hand, as you say, for them to win. And they really need to win both of those to go above us. And, um, and you know, it, it, so it, it's all there still to play for. It, it really is. Um, I'm very nervous about the whole thing. Not not just today, but about the remainder of the season, it has to be said, because it's been a while. I mean, I can't remember too many times where the end of the season, in recent years, I mean, where the end of the season has petered out into nothing. I mean, even when Moyes came back in, we were still, when he brought in, we were still like, you know, sniffing around the relegation yeah, zone. Lot, first season. Absolutely. Last season, of course, we still had Europe to play. And, and again, you know, we had a little flirt up until Christmas with relegation as well. That that sort of mid-table mediocrity where you have nothing more to play for. It's It's been a little while. Actually, it has been a little while. So I don't want any of that. I don't want a relegation thing either, by the way. I, I want to put it right up until the last game. I want to be, you know, with a chance of Europe, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you, do, you don't want to go to Etihad relying on a three points to get European football, but it's better than going to the Etihad with nothing to play for. And I guess what you've just got to hope for is the title is over and Man City have a, a FA Cup final, possibly a Champions League final to look forward to as well. So for that reason, they might rotate a, a little bit, but yeah. we'll deal with that later on. It's all about getting three points today. I think we, you know, with the sort of games remaining, it's hard not to look at Fulham Palace and Luton and go, well, we've got to win them and get something against Chelsea and that will be enough for European people. It will be. Lose today, it will put pressure on you. Basically, as it stands, we probably won't need to get anything against Liverpool and Man City as long as you do the, your job in another four games. But you lose today, it puts pressure on you. You say, well, you're probably going to have to beat Liverpool at home now if you want European football. You're going to have to win against Liverpool. And that's not a pressure that you want to uh, put upon yourself. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, actually. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, we've had a few of the easier teams sort of in the last few games. And obviously, you know, as you mentioned, you know, Luton, you've got to beat them. You've got to win today. I know they beat us 5-0, but, you know, the class is the easier teams. We're not, we've had we've played a couple of the easier teams recently in terms of like Burnley and Tottenham, and, and we've not got the wins. So that's, um, you know, we need to step up on that, really. Um, Daniel says, uh, Danny Ings should start today if Bowie's not available. Do you agree with that? I don't mind if he plays in the number 10. I, that I wouldn't mind. I thought he was all right the last time he played there. I think he's got to play. I mean, I'm mindful that I'm speaking now and people will know the lineup, so I don't. But I, I think he's got to play Corne or Rings. Can't keep, just keep ruining these players in, in the way that he has. You know, there's no, it's just, I think he's asking too much of them. So, yeah, if Bowen is not around today, then. Um, I hope he is, though. I hope Bowen is around today. It's, it's something, I mean, let's have a little. Let's have a little. See what you're conjuring up. I mean, I'm guessing Alvarez is starting. So, because why, why would he not? We need him. We need him back certainly to to help out in that midfield because the, the midfield is has been poor uh, an awful lot. Um, Tanner says we need a win today. Please, Moyes, play the strongest available lineup. Well, let's take a look at the lineup, and you can decide. If you think it's the strongest one for West Ham. In goal for the Hammers this afternoon is Captain Lucas Fabianski with a back four of Vladimir Soufal, Konstantinos Mavapanos, Nefer Gerd, and Emerson. 
we have a mid centre midfield pairing of James Ward Prowse and Edson Alves, then it's a case of work out what you think the rest is. Is it 4 4 2 or is Danny Ings playing in the number 10, perhaps? But the remaining personnel as as follows we've got Lucas Paqueta, who will likely be on the left, Caduce, who will likely be on the right, and then you've got Mikhail Antonio and Danny Ings, who could be up front together, or with Danny Ings perhaps playing just behind Antonio. That's your starting 11 for the Hammers this afternoon. And just for a little bit of context, we'll do the bench in detail in a minute, but for a little bit of context, there's no Jared Bowen, but there is Thomas Suchek and Kurt Zuma, but that's your West Ham starting 11 this afternoon, Gonzo. Yeah, um, I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I I, I would actually, one thing I would trust Moyes with is, I, I, I don't think he manages the players' fitnesses very well, but I would suggest if there's those two players are not in a team, and I'm talking about Zuma and Suchek here, there will be good data-driven medical reasons why they're not. Because I think if he could play them, he would. So actually, I'm not going to give him any stick for not having them in there. I I, I really do. I believe if he can, if he could play them, he would. I just I don't. I reckon they've had a look and they are absolutely knackered. And you know they've they've had a look at their numbers or whatever. They've stuck them on the medical table and do whatever they do to measure their fitness. And and they're coming a little bit short. So um, yeah, that that I don't mind. You know, look, Ward Prowse. He might be all right next to Alvarez there. I mean, he, he really might. It's just when he's out of position that I don't particularly um, enjoy watching him play, it has to be said. Um, you said you didn't mention... Um, uh, you said Bowen's not on the bench. You Sorry, you did mention Correct. that, didn't you? Uh, if I had to guess, if I had to guess, it would be Kudus on the right, Antonio on the left, and Ings up front on his own. I hope it's not. I hope it's not. Um, I would prefer a four-four-two. I, I really would, in in one way, shape, or form. If that obviously had, that would be Kudus on the right and and Paqueta on the left with the two fellas up front. I don't know how he gets him into the number ten Ings in this one, unless it's it's what I said. But with him behind Antonio, um, with Paqueta on the left, so maybe just maybe does that. But I mean, it, we can't have him up up the top on his own. So it might kill our counter attack. But he could he could almost play as a false nine. And then we just have the two wide players in Antonio and um, and Kudus. And actually, they provide the legs running in behind. So that would sort of still keep the, the counter-attack alive, really. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not unhappy to see this because I do, I think, you know, there's a number of players who clearly aren't fit and aren't ready and they're not playing. Yeah, I think um, I'm OK with it. I would have preferred Ben Johnson or Sufal. The centre-backs sort of picked themselves, given, you know, Zuma's question marks of his fitness he, he's played a lot recently Zuma so he had he would have had to sort of um, drop out at some point Emerson makes sense considering he's suspended for Thursday Ward Pouse and Alvarez I was impressed with in the second half at the Molyneux so that partnership we've seen against Wolves yeah. they looked good against Wolves for that 45 minutes so I, I'm I understand why he's going for that over the Suchek and Alvarez one and this is where it comes into guessing my guess would be Caduceus on the right Paquetta's on the left and Antonio's up front, and Ings is probably more as a second striker than a number 10, probably closer to Antonio than what Paqueta would be, but yeah. dropping back and filling in and helping out the midfield as and when. Because Polina, and I assume, uh, we'll do the film team in a minute, I'm assuming Polina's starting in there, possibly alongside Lukic. They'll be happy to get on the ball, as long as it's not Tom Kearney. He, he would, weirdly, I think Kearney pulling the strings from deep would give me a bit of concern, but they don't go too far forward, Polina and Lukic. They don't go gallivanting forward and making runs in behind the Fulham attack. So it's quite an easy one from a defensive standpoint for Ings to just drop in and just sit on Polina and stop him getting on the ball. So I'm happy with it. He's, listen, he had to change something. He's changed it a little bit. Hopefully it works. And if it does, we've got something for Thursday night with Danny Ings up front on the assumption that A, Jared Bowen's not back and also B, Lucas Paquette is suspended, so he's got to try something, and he, he's done it. I think it's a sensible lineup from the manager, but the good thing is, we're all guessing. Mm. Everybody, Which... Everybody's guessing. Um, the live chat, are getting, I'm reading it now, everybody's guessing as to what's going on here, whether Caduce, some people think Caduce is number 10, because he said that's his best position, but what I will say to that is, Caduce has said that for ages, that number 10 is his best position. He's still not being played there. So I don't think he's Moyes is suddenly going to put him in the middle because he said in an interview that's where he prefers to play. Um, I almost feel quite confident that it'll be Paquette on the left and Caduce on the right. It's just a case of how does it 
play out sure. with the Ings and Antonio one. Anyway, um, but saying that, um, Hammerboy says Caduce on the right, Antonio on the left, Paquette and number 10, and Ings up front. So we, we don't know. I, 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 is, yes, I think it, it. yes. I, I hope it's not that, but that that, that would be sufficient. Uh, but what you know, I mean, just to just to bolt onto what you said, which I think was what you were on the way to say in there. If, if we're all guessing, then the chat's guessing, Silver's guessing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's no bad thing. The bench for the Hammers had a couple of absentees. Um, Ariola is still missing, so Anand continues as a substitute, substitute goalkeeper for the Hammers. We've also got Ogbonna on there with Maxwell Cooney. Adam Creswell drops back to the bench after playing against Leverkusen. George Earthy remains in the squad. Ben Johnson's on there with Divine Mubama, Thomas Suchek and Kurt Zuma. So quite a, a decent-looking bench, actually, for once in use. Every position is covered. Uh, right back, left back, centre back, centre midfield, attacking midfield, winger, striker. Everything's just a balanced bench. Yeah. Whether you use it or not remains to be seen. But no Jai Bowen, no Alphonse Ariola, and no Calvin Phillips after he kicked somebody and felt his hamstring. Quite right. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the trouble is for Earthy, Cornet, and Obama is even though they are attacking players, they are all aware that Johnson. Uh, Cresswell and Suchek would all be used in attack before Moyes even considered using uh, using those. So um, they're just there. They, they can um, play um, angry play, play Angry Birds on their phone or whatever whatever they're doing. And they they ain't going to be needed today. And um, would you like to know the Fulham team? Yes, please. I would love to know the Fulham team. No surprises from Marco Silva in goal is their captain Leno. We've got two goalkeepers at a skipper this afternoon. Um, with a back four, Castagna at right back, Tosin Adebayo at centre back alongside Calvin Bassi, with Anthony Robinson at left back. Lukic partners Polina in centre midfield. We'll have a Wobi on the right, Andreas Pereira in the number 10 role, Willian over on the left, and Muniz, who was the player of the month in the Premier League for yeah. March. He is the striker for the Cottagers this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty much the team we expected, isn't it? So, um, yeah, that, that is that's that's Pereira there, isn't it? That's that's who they're yeah, 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 Pereira, yeah, and Andreas Pereira, right? Okay, yeah, yeah but that, that's that's pretty much it. So, yeah, as as we expected, that they've got the benefit of um, I've have, have been rested, so it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, Moyes does have some fresh legs in there, or be they? Injured legs in the case of a Gerd and, and old legs in the case of Danny Ings, but there's there's legs there, nonetheless. So, um, but they've got some old legs themselves, and uh, in, in, in Willian, so um, and some informed legs. Uh, in Muniz is um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, lot lot of legs in that Fulham team. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's a lot of uh, big arms on the bench as well. When we did the preview, I forgot you did not mention this guy. So I don't know if you forgot he plays for Fulham or something. But this I hadn't. Is your... I hadn't. I, I hadn't. I just forgot. I did know, and I meant to open up with it at the start of the preview, which I was going to say. Any team that has a Dharma Traore in the in the starting lineup is a team to be feared. I meant to open up with it. We started chatting, and I, I forgot me. I forgot me line. Long, long-term hammers chat, debate, argument, and a joke is Adama Charoui. Gons is a big fan. I think he's all pace, power, and crap. That's um, why I'm a big. That's why I'm a big fan. That's the, I think he's perfect for David Boys. Um, Gonzo loves pace. I I like footballing ability. Um, anyway, the... <laughs> and, di- and dyed hair. To be fair, I, I like pace and dyed hair. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Right, the bench for the Cottagers this afternoon is Rodak, who's the substitute goalkeeper, as well as former Hammer Issa Diop. Harrison Reed is on there with Tom Kearney. We've got Bobby Cordova Reed, or Bobby Reed is what I call him, just because he was that Bristol City. I just know him as Bobby Reed. But Cordova Reed is on the bench with Harry Wilson, Adama Traoré, and they've got long term David Moyes target Amanda Broya with Raul Jimenez on the bench as well. So quite a. An experienced bench. I mean, these are the two oldest squads in the Premier League. But it feels like they've got the oldest bench in the Premier League as well. Looking at that, that's right. That's right. Oh, good for them. They're all right. They ain't got many games. That's that's good. It's it's all good for them. Wilson Wilson scored a humdinger against us, didn't he? Um, he's a good. He's a, a um. He's he's slow actually. He's a slow player, but he's got some good uh good dead ball delivery. Mm, is he better than our dead ball delivery guy? That's the interesting thing. Yeah, so anyway, there you go. That's the Fulham team. No surprises um, from Marco Silva. Um, listen, it's one that, had we not got smashed 5-0, I'd be looking at it going, surely we win today because you know, 
they won two games away from home all season. One was the very first away game of the season. So since then, 16 away games, one win. It's not a good record whatsoever. If there's any team in the Premier League that could be forgiven for being on the beach, it's Fulham. There's a, a, that's a stable club. The manager feels pretty stable. Most of the players in the manager will be here next season. They can't go down. They're not going to get European football. That, they could. I mean, mathematically, they can get European football. But I don't think they're expecting it or even dreaming of it. There's almost no hope there. So if there's any team expected to have put their feet up by now, it's probably, possibly this team we're to face this afternoon. But that 5-0 does give me the fear a little bit. But at the same time, I remember going to... Fulham last season, we won 1 0 through a Harrison Reed own goal. And we didn't have a shot. I don't even think we had a shot all game. It was just an own goal. And we came away with a 1 0 win. It was, we were happy because we're in a relegation battle. It was yeah. a little bit like, say, so don't deserve it. Um, Connor has said, apparently, you're right that Mikel Antonio was on the left. Mm. I wouldn't put it past him. Not Antonio, I'm always. I was, I was, yeah, I, what would I you see prefer him to doing see? It. I mean, I would, I would, yeah, um, not this team. I, ideally, I would have had it a, a bit differently. But with going with the parameters of this team, I, I, I think I would prefer to. I prefer to see a four-four-two. I, I would. I mean, my worry with this, if he goes that way, is that Ings is isolated. Um, but as I say, as I say, it can work tactically. It, it can. Is he is going to have to come short? Um, Maybe take some centre backs with him. He's he's not going to win the ball, um, so he's not going to hold him off with his strength. So he'd probably have to lay it off. He'd have to get it. He'd have to lay it off straight away to Pakatar, and then you'd have the two runners, which would be Kudus and Antonio, um, with Pakatar playing the ball in. Um, that that's that's really the only way that that, that tactic can work, I, I think. So, uh, and and you know what? If it does, fair play. I mean, ab- absolutely fair play. But I I would prefer the four four two because I just think you've got your classic uh, big man and little man, <laughs> classic old man and old man up front. Uh, that, that 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 winning combo. Yeah, I mean. I just hope if it's not working, we change early doors. The good thing is we don't need to make a substitution. Um, in order to change up, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Marcus Silva had to make three subs after half an hour because they were getting smashed by Sheffield United. He made three subs after half an hour into the game. And it was a big talking point. And then it was a case of, well, why do you have to wait till half why, why do you have to wait till half time? Yeah. You're getting smashed early. What was the point of waiting? And I hope we just don't wait. Like I said, we can change it without any subs. Move Paquette over to the left, put Antonio up front, go 4 4 2. If you really have to put Caduce on the left and put Antonio on the right, there's ways, there's quite a diff- few different ways you can play this. Go sort of more 4 3 3, drop Paquetta deeper and push Ward Pouse up a bit so they're both playing as number eight rather than having a number 10. There's ways of changing the system without making a sub. And I just hope that after 20 minutes or something, if Ulmer are on top and we're struggling to create anything, that we just, just alter it and try and get this because it's. It's just such a big game for us. Anyway, right, what we're going to do now, we're going to do compile a little bet, myself and Gonzo, and if this bet wins, we're going to give one of you the winnings. On Thursday, when we did our live event, we were Thomas Suchek goal away from five people oh, winning yeah. 100 quid. Um, and to be fair, me and Gonzo didn't choose Suchek. It was the room. The room. Our bets won, Gonzo. The room. Yeah, blame the room. The room lost it for us. Anyway, no room today. It's just me and you. So what, yeah. what are you fancying for this little bet? Look, I think we're going to have to, going to have to go for a West Ham win here. Yes. Although I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. But I think to for the odds to be, I just, I just don't think it's right as well. Actually, the odds are probably better for Fulham to win. But um, I think so. And what about a Danny Ings goal? What, what are our, what do we think about that? What are the odds there? I'm happy with that. If you, if that's what you want. You, I'm happy to put that. Why in. not? Why not? He's playing him. Let's let's give it a go. He's not going to play him on the wing, surely. Even more, he might play him at like. Left back or something, but even even David Moyes probably unlikely to play Danny Ings on the wing. Could he shot on target? You okay to stick that? Definitely, in? definitely. Fancy a bit of that, that especially with him being out on the right hand side. Yeah, uh, their striker Muniz gets Muniz gets a lot of shots. The guy's just like trigger happy. Um, two shots for him. Oh yeah, two. Two's good. Two's good. That's got to be good. That's a good Ed, bet. We need one more thing. Do Anything we? else? Do you, do you fancy him to get booked? Oh. Um, what about Caduce up against Robinson, who bombs forward quite a lot? And he does. He's um, fast. He's become a bit more skillful. He doesn't it, mind yeah. a booking, Caduce. That'd be big odds. It'd be big odds. Well, give it, give it big odds then. Go on. Let's go for it. 
Yeah, two two one hundred and fifty pound winners. That's what we'll do. There you go. Okay. Right. Nice. Okay. Yeah. If this bet wins, two people will win one hundred and fifty pounds each, and um, we'll tell you how to enter in just a second. But the bet is as follows: West Ham to win the game. Danny Ings to score a goal. Caduce to have a shot on target. Their striker Mooney's to have two shots, and Caduce to be booked up against Robinson. And two people to win one hundred and fifty pounds to enter in the live chat. Please put the following phrase: tossing and turning. Tossing and turning, there you go. Uh, the spelling for tossing will be on the screen in a minute, but someone will get it right. Um, there you go. But Gonzo, you've seen the teams. What are you fancying? Not a lot to be, not a lot to be perfectly honest with you. No, I, I you know, that the fatigue levels worry me. Um, the the direction uh, uh, coming from the bench worries me. The the makeshift nature of the team concerns me particularly as we are in a comp it feels like we've got an emergency stick in plaster team here yet yeah, it is a completely completely foreseeable situation so it's, it's it, this feels like to me that david moyes said oh my goodness we're this fixture congestion and, and we've got a small squad oh i'm gonna have to use people i don't normally use which is just not good enough um, as far as I'm concerned, so maybe this was the plan all along. Ma does, it it, may... does it be like that though? He's, he's... Oh, 100 percent. What, what, uh, what, what's he done that makes you think that too? What's he done? He's, he's put Danny Ings in the team. He doesn't rate Danny Ings. But Bowen's injured. That's why Bowen was fit. Exactly. Bowen that's what, that's what I mean. Totally foreseeable. I mean, and, and I don't even say it with hindsight. <laughs> it was not even just that injury. Uh, I'm not. That injury was yeah. an impact injury. That I don't uh, listen. I don't care if it's an impact injury or it's or it's a cold or it's food poisoning. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. What was totally foreseeable was that going in with a small squad that either people were going to get suspensions or going to get injured. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you're not going to be able. To, predict it and say oh he's going to get an arm injury or a thigh injury no of course not but this was totally and utterly predictable and he, he absolutely in january absolutely should have got ideally a winger and a striker but one, one or the other and now he finds yeah, himself having to use yeah having to use players that and that's what i mean i think he, he look at it and this was not the plan the plan wasn't to use danny yings he gambled that everybody including bowen was going to remain fit and he was maybe could rotate one player out or that and it might be antonio might start and then suchek or or ward prowse that was going to be his sort of rotation probably calvin phillips in there would play a part but what he never it, and it was always going to be an emergency when one of his forwards and I include Bowen in there. One of them got an injury. He's I actually think he's bloody lucky, bearing in mind the amount he's playing Caduce, that Caduce isn't injured as well at the yeah. moment. Um, so yeah, so I think he's I think he's reacting, and I do, I think it's a, it's like a reactionary team to something that could have so easily been covered um in. And then the, the, the weird thing is, and the weirdest thing is, he does need to have played a winger or, or a forward. The weird thing is. I didn't think they were having great seasons, Ben Rama and Fournells. I really didn't, but he was using them. Yeah. And they might have eaten up 20 minutes here or there. And those, those are 20 minutes that someone else is getting a rest. He's decided to keep a player he won't use and got rid of a couple who can play in sort of advanced positions who he did use. So I just thought I find a whole thing. I, I am, I worries the hell out yeah, of me. You, basically. You've changed your tune though, because previously you said Moyes would never have authorised these sales that anyone coming in. And now you're suggesting that is David Moyes. Sorry, that Dave Moyes wouldn't have sold for Niles and Ben Rama without a replacement coming in. Well, yeah, but I, yeah, I, you know, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I find it hard to blame the composition of his squad on, on anyone else but him, really. Um, look, I don't, I don't, and I don't listen. I do not blame him for turning down Wilfred Zaha. I, I really don't. I, I absolutely get that. I, I really do. I really do. But. Um, I, I just think he's gone in. He's gone in half cooked. It has to work. This has to work for him. And yeah, just for me, confident for today. No, because that the whole thing, the composition of this hurried nature of this team, makes me incredibly nervous. And I don't even mind Danny Ings being involved, but he played really well when he played in that number ten role, and we've barely seen him since. Yeah. And, and I, I just think give it, give him a little ten minutes here or there. So if you do need him, and I'm going to say the same for Cornet. Get these players right, not not a hundred percent match fix, they're not gonna play all the time, but give them a little 10, 15 minutes here or there. So if you do need to call upon them, you're not basically saying, Oh, by the way, here's your first game for a month or two months or whatever it may be. And I, and what I would say is I'd say the same with Maxwell Cornet. Maxwell Cornet um came on, changed the game as a substitute. He actually the next game he played, he scored, and we haven't seen him since. Well, we had as a substitute once, but we, you know, he didn't get any benefit from scoring a goal for us. So yeah, I, I'm 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 worried. I'm definitely worried. Yeah, I don't. I, he's got part to play for the January transfer window in the composition of this squad, but I'm I, I mainly 
still blame David Sullivan. And I guess it depends on who you believe. And this is possibly where me and you differ. But I do believe X West employee when it comes to news and transfers and stuff like that. And when he said that Moyes and Steiden and Noble all want Abraham Osbert, I'm going to believe that. Like I said, you don't have to, and you personally don't have to, but I believe that, and I believe it was Sullivan that pulled the rug on that deal, and it's him that I blame for the squad being small. However, it's more as I blame for the lack of form from the squad players, and I agree with what you said in regards to the certain players playing and then not seeing minutes afterwards, and that's what we cover in reviews and previews every yeah. week. And I think the one of the, the best comparisons I could sort of give came to fruition on Thursday when... Leverkusen was struggling to break us down. It was nil-nil, and Alonso did his first two subs. Before he brought on the big boys, Bonnie Face and Hoffman, he brought on Teller, who was on loan at Burnley last season in the Championship. Now, it cost him a bit of money, £18 million or something they paid, and he's always been a bit of a rotational squad player for Alonso. But I won't believe anyone that tells me Teller's a better player than Maxwell Kearney in terms of football sure. and ability, but one of them this season has played a considerable amount of minutes and had a large part to play in the success of Leverkusen, although not starting every week. And the other one's just seen no football whatsoever. Mm, so yeah. on Thursday, one could come on with the trust of his manager and try and influence the game, and the other one had to sit there and watch because he hasn't been utilised, won't be utilised, and, t- and today still isn't. We've got Paqueta suspended for Thursday, Bowen out, and he's opted to go for Danny Ings ahead of him. And he'll probably be sitting there thinking, I'm, I still ain't going to get on the pitch today. So while I won't blame Moyes completely, I think sure. he's got a part to play for composite of the squad, I will blame him for the lack of football for a lot of the players that we could or should be using yeah. at this point of the season. Well, yeah, I mean, just I mean, that's the thing. So, just quickly to come back on that, I think even if we accept that everybody want Ibrahim Osborne and then um, and then David Sullivan yeah, yeah. didn't go and pull the plug, even if we accept that at that point, David Moyes' manager had to say, "Okay, I didn't get the guy that I wanted. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start using." Maxwell Cornet, or, or I'm going to start, let's see if George Earthy can, can play or just give us something, give us 15 minutes here or there. It, it's almost a case of the, the stubbornness, as he said, right, okay. Yeah, we'll like I said, I don't think he's blameless. Or, or, or nobody. And, I don't think he's yeah. blameless. I think mm. he's got his part to play. I just... Sure. Sullivan. Yeah. It, it, no, no, no. What, I, what I would like managers. Sullivan to do is as the owner to actually take responsibility and say, no, uh, this is my club. You are going in with a Fred Bear squad here. So actually, I've tried to give. I've, I've chucked a few. I'm actually going to buy you a player. And actually, which is funny enough, what he used to do. Um, but actually, to go out and just get a striker and a, and a winger on loan might have might have helped. Who knows? Moyes probably wouldn't have played him anyway. Anyway, right. Let's go back to this game. Can you get your thoughts in, please, ladies and gentlemen, about the West Ham team and the Fulham team? While you're doing that, just one point in direction of match bingo. The sponsors of this afternoon's build-up show and watch along. You can download their app via the link in the description below. It's free to download and free to sign up. However, it is a gambling app, so you must be 18 years or over and please gamble responsibly. However, this afternoon they have a bingo card ahead of the West Ham Fulham game. You can buy a maximum of five. It's £2 per play. You'll be given 15 things you need to occur in the match and you can check them off one by one. It does it automatically, so if you miss something, don't worry about it. It pays out first line, second line and full house. But only the first person to win the first line will get paid out for that. We've had numerous winners here from Hammers Chat subscribers. It's a little bit of fun to your game. Uh, a little bit of something to keep you entertained. So if it's a nil-nil, you might still win a little bit of money watching a drab affair at the London Stadium this afternoon. So get it downloaded. The link's in the description below. Later on this week on Thursday, if you go in the darts section, you will pick up free darts cards. Bingos is free every single week. There's always free to play cards every single month. When we do our preview for next weekend's game, we'll remind you of that free card. But for today, for the West Ham Fulham game, it's £2 per play. Link's in the description below. Please do use that link, though, so that they know you come from Hammers Chat. Right, let's start with Mancunian Hammer, who says, I just don't want to watch Fulham pass the ball back all afternoon. want us to press and win the ball back, not retreat and hope they don't create. I'm at the point where I dread watching us. Hammer Boy said, I think we will win. Scrappy, but moments of talent, a must win and huge game. We absolutely must get top yeah. seven. Sharky says, good to see Ings and Antonio both playing today. Robert says, do you think we will see Earthy today? No, great goal he scored though against Norwich. Fantastic, great goal. weren't it? Mm, beautiful. And played on Friday, so they, came, they were in Germany, came back. Yeah. And then played yeah. on Friday. Now he's, he's he's grown. I mean, this year he, he's grown. You can see he's he's grown this year. Visibly see it as well, which is really good. 
Um, Hammer Boy says, looking forward to seeing a Gerd and Ings after his last performance. I expect both to play on Thursday. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. And he said, our sub minutes this season are around 50 minutes per game. Brighton 140, Villa 100, and Bournemouth 115. So our subs will always be undercooked. And and the players in the, in the first team overcooked. Lewis says, we'd like to know what you think of Ward Prowse. Started the season with lots of goal contributions. Now seems to offer very little. Was he overperforming? I find it perplexing. He's just been moved, moved around a lot, hasn't he? I thought he was really good at the start of the season. He was in a settled position. Um, I think you could start. Playing a play out, we, we've just seen it so much, you know, you've sort of four nails, and it's just what happens. You start playing continually, playing a player out of position in positions that aren't suited to him. You're not going to see the best from him. Um, I, I thought he was thought he was good when he played, um, in the second half against Wolves, put him back in his same position. Thought he was and not just because he scored from a corner, I thought he looked, I thought he looked a lot better. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's that. I think he was he's an average midfielder with an exceptional set piece delivery. I think that's what we got. I think we still got it. And it's pointless us playing him on the wing or as attack. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, we signed an, an average Premier League midfielder for Southampton. That's where we get him. We'll see some good games in open play like we saw uh, in the second half against Wolves. We'll see some excellent set pieces. We'll see some average set pieces. And we'll see some games where he's just anonymous. But this is the thing, the difference between the elite centre midfielders and the average ones where they tend to not have those games where they go missing. I think Ward House has had a few of them. So I think he's been an OK purchase. I think he's, you know, chipped him with a few important goals, like like against Wolves from scoring from a corner. And um, some important assists. And funny enough, in the number 10 position at the start of the season, he was excellent. A way to Brighton in particular, sort of playing in just ahead of Alvarez and Suchet because it was a case of how does Moyes get them all in? Well, shift Paquette out of the way. And then it's worked. But I think very quickly teams find us out a little bit. When we do that, it's almost like an element of surprise. Well, hang on, what's West Ham? Oh, bloody hell, it's working. But then... When teams find you out, it's like, right, can you come up with something new now? And well, the answer's been no. We'll keep on doing what we've been doing. He's had some fantastic games in number 10 role. Um, Arsenal, he was pivotal when we beat Arsenal in that position as well. But he's had some games where there's maybe a bit of emphasis on him to create something. And he can't come up with it because it's not his gig. So I think he's been an, an, a decent enough sign in a 5, 6 out of 10. And that sounds a bit low, but... We've seen ones and twos, and you know, oh, Kane is probably on the minus at the minute. Yeah, so. we see, see people like Vlasic who don't even see him play. So yeah, yeah, he's a lot better than something like that, isn't he? For sure. Um, Paul thinks Ward House is a sacrificial lamb. There always appears to be one, though, doesn't there? What would would you, well, I don't well, I don't know what Paul means. What do you think Paul means? Do you think he means with for David Moyes, or you know that that just just from what you mean. With a player for David Moyes, we froze, froze to the wolves literally. Um, no, I would say that. I would say that it's sort of like a bit like for now. It's almost like somebody's got yeah. to be out of position that has more of a work ethic than perhaps some of his sure. colleagues do, but to accommodate other players that perhaps don't have that work rate, you need somebody in there that will just work their nuts off regardless of where you and not, com- Ward- and not complain as you well. could put more yeah. post center back and you would give it his all yeah um he would do his best at and he'd probably have a couple of good games at center back just through sheer hard work you, obviously eight out of ten will be crap but he he will just give a hundred percent and i think we've got a few of those in the team yeah we do we do indeed yeah for sure. um jeff who's captain it's fabianski we both goalkeepers are captain um to today um Lee says Noble wasn't a great player either. I think Ward Prowse is above average, a little harsh. Six goals and eleven assists, consistent set pieces in the team more often than not for me. I mean, we think he's fantastic at set pieces. Yeah. Like there's no like I think he's one of the best in the league at it. But just in terms of open play, he's, he's not a bad player. I just don't think he's one of the best centre midfielders in the Premier League. I think he's um he's he's all right. He's he's okay. Um there's nothing wrong with him. I think he's yeah, I, mean, I think he's probably good. Let's you know say it as well. He's probably good for squad morale. He's probably seems like a nice lad. Seems a you know sort of fun sort of guy. Good guy to have around. So yeah, I, I bet David Moyes loves him in the dressing room. I bet he's not disruptive at all. And I know things do count. They they do matter. There's, there's no doubt about it. You no, know, I I I don't think saying someone's an average Premier League player is an insult. I think it's no, a no. big compliment actually. Mm, yeah. Like yeah, being yeah. Premier League level, an average Premier League player is a bloody high standard of football. It depends. It's not like we're saying he's crap. We're no, just... no, 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 but he's not. Yeah, he's not one of our top players. He's not Ketter or Caduceus or Bowen. He's not at that, that level, for sure. 
Nor in the Premier League. He's not a McAllister. He's not no. one of those. He's not on that level, but he's also not on the level of. No. no. He's better than Josh Cullen. Yeah, but it's a, it's not it's it's not binary. It's not like big gushing and everyone's world class or an assessment is harsh. Yeah. There's a whole tier and a whole scale there, isn't there? Yeah, I think I think being average is a bloody good thing to be. I wish I was an average man. <laughs> I wish I was an average League Two player. Uh, Man Union says War Prowse lacks strength, speed, and athleticism, which leaves him struggling against a lot of Premier League centre midfielders. Hammer Boy says problem is how many players this season have actually had consistent positions and tactics. I feel like they all change every week, bar a few. Yeah, maybe. But there are a lot of managers that change tactics. I think that's that's not not a massive issue. Um, I, I don't. I think mean, to be fair, what I would probably say is today is um in terms of the tactics someone said about the high press and the fast press from the start I, I just don't think you i don't think you get that i think actually david Moyes' tactics after a european game tend to conserve energy and it does sit back I, I think we'll start slow rather than pressing really hard i'd imagine anyway um liam says we've got 12 players ward and Prowse. charlie's got a comma between ward and Prowse. look oh that's right that's how he's gonna do it snooky Nice. That see, oh, that's that's. I, if, if we were talking about James Ward, he's an elite centre midfielder, Gonzo. James Ward. Oh. Yeah, that's it's, it's the Prowse bit. That's that's what we got. That makes got him average. It does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Lee says, "Come on, he's a tidy player. Thirty million well spent. Really gives it away. Look what's it." But nobody's saying it's not thirty million yeah, I mean, well spent. Much, you know, t- yeah, nobody's saying. Tidy enough flight, average flight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just, just not, because yeah. Phillips no. cost too much doesn't mean uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're right when you said McAllister. There are there are there will be I don't, I don't know. There'll be twenty thirty midfielders in the Premier League better than James Ward Prowse, and there'll be some that are a bit worse. Yeah, he's, he's middle, isn't he? He's but put it this. I'll, I'll put it this way. He, he sometimes well often gets played as attacking midfielder for us. I'd rather have Ross Barkley to do that job for West Ham. I mean, I think that's David Moyes' fault rather than James Ward Prowse's fault. But um, you know, it's just yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lee says we're we're James Ward Prowse bashers. I mean, <laughs> it's probably coming across like that. How dare actually... you say? I know, I know, I know. Lee's joking. How dare you? How dare you not say James Ward Prowse is world class? Yeah, harsh, anyway. harsh. Uh, where us. would the fun be if we sat here saying all our players are elite level Premier League? Imagine, players. imagine the player ratings. Ten out of ten for everyone. Yeah, they're all just they're all they're all ten out of ten. They're all fantastic. Brilliant. Yes, now says Ward Prowse is going to shut us all up. Good. <laughs> we're not. We're not even saying he's crap. We're literally no, happy no, with no, the no, new no, team. No. It's binary. Uh, we're in a binary uh, age, mate. We're in a binary age. I'm telling you, one or the other. No, no, <laughs> no middle ground. No, no room for nuance. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is. I hope you don't think that we would be disappointed with that AS. I hope you, you do realise that if James Ward Browse scores, we'll be buzzing. We'll be very, very happy with that. Um and you, anyway, at least at least Lee gets it. He's not on the level of Caduceus again. At least Lee gets it. And that's like if you were to take all the centre midfielders in the Premier League and list them in, in terms of what you think of ability, Ward Prowse would be somewhere in the middle third, the middle quarter even. He'd be somewhere in there where there's, there's like Gonzo said, there's 50 better on him, but there's 50 worse than him. There's it's somewhere in the middle. And, and, and you know what? Even if you took 60,000 West Ham fans in the stadium and said, Who is your who do you think is West Ham's best player? I don't think a hundred would say James Ward Prowse. It's not a conspiracy to undermine <laughs> Lionel Messi here. This is not what's happening. We're, we're just a appra- we're just appraising. There is there is a reason. Mm. That he costs half as much as Lucas Paqueta. There's a there's a really good reason for that. <laughs> Lewis, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lewis thinks he's average. <gasps> Can't believe Lewis hates. Oh him. no! <laughs> no, that's the average. Let's say average. Um, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. The views have increased as we're discussing this this nonsense. That's because Charlie. So don't probably, worry, Lewis. We're happy, mate. Charlie's probably changed the title to James Ward Pro slagging match. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbnail says Ward Prowse <laughs> out now. <laughs> Hater, haters insult James. Internet haters insult James Ward Prowse. Um, anyway, um, where, where, where is it? Mark has said it's a Pikachu. Yeah, it's not this game. This game is the winners are getting signed prints and books, but I'll be back for 
Possibly next weekend. The Paquette shirt is still on one. Uh, Wayne, thank you for the $5. Cheers, says it's going to be another scrappy game, but hopefully we can scrape a win. A super sub right Now, I need to go in two minutes because I've got my lunch. But before we do that, I just want to bring in Bevo. Hello. Do you think War Prowse is world class? Uh, no, we don't have any. Hate her. Hate her. Hate her. Uh, he's good. He's nasty, good enough to play in Europe, but he's not world class. Nasty piece of work. <laughs> I'm just, just trying. Man. He's good enough to. He's good enough to play in Europe, but he's not world. He's not world class. Yeah. Um. Anyway, right. Um. Chris, I've got one. There, there is one literally o- over there. Actually, I might go get it just to pretend to be a. Just. He's probably. Gio's got such little respect for James Ward Price. Probably wiped his ass of it earlier. I definitely didn't do that. No. Cost a few quid. I'm not doing that. Um, no, absolutely. Still cheaper than Andrex triple oh, quilted quilt, toilet quilt, roll, quilt, to be fair. Hello, Vera. <laughs> yeah. Hello, yeah. I'm not buying that. Cheaper there's than only, that. There's only stuff. one thing going to happen to that. <laughs> anyway, um, before me and Gonzo go, Gonzo, what you think you said 1 1 in the preview? You I'm, I'm going sticking... sticking... to stick with a 1 with 1, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not as confident as I was. I was feeling quite confident this week but i think it's just bit the nerves are just starting to get to me because it's quite a big game and i think the results largely went our way yesterday obviously newcastle winning not ideal but the other three went in favor of us um so it's you know we win and we go six it's fantastic so i'm hoping we can get the win win at all costs today i'll take a repeat of the wolves game i don't really care as long as we get the three points and we're six tonight that'd be buzzing hopefully james ward prowse gets the winner What's what um, you having for lunch before you go? I'm having sausage, mash, onion gravy, and homemade Yorkies. I oh, I can crazy. I can smell it for the last fifteen minutes. I am drooling here oh, you um, no. because no. We're, get your priorities right. We're just having a stir fry for tea, so we're having a big mm. lunch and a small tea. We're having it the other way round because mm. football's on half four. You're half having six, a world class lunch and a harsh tea. Nothing yes, middle, so yeah. I'm having a piquetta lunch and a ward house tea. That's right. <laughs> just, just something a little bit average. But anyway, uh, Charlie, I will see you at half time. Gonzo, are you going or staying? I'll stay for two minutes. Right, Charlie, I'll see you at half time. Mm, my... All right. What's happening? Yeah, not much here. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I had my lunch earlier. Nothing as grand as him, by the way. Um, it's I'm thinking it's heavy. It's a very heavy lunch he's eating. At home, you know, when you go to if you go to the pub for lunch, I could I expect it to be heavy, but like if you're going if you're just at home, I wouldn't I don't know if I'd have that heavy a lunch. Um, I, I, I can't eat heavy late at night, you see, because I've got older. I um, I used, I used to be the big plate boy at the Toby Carvery, um, not anymore, sure. not anymore, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, has to, anything big has to be at, at lunch. I, I can't, like, I can't eat a meal at eight o'clock at night or anything like that, you know, so um, yeah, anyway. There you go. What have you had for lunch? I had Greg's. Can't lie. Oh, there you go. What's your che- cheese, che- cheese and baguette. No, that's okay. not. Um, it's all about the points today, Charlie. So I've stayed around to say. It's all Lay on me. about Preach. the points. I don't care about the performance. I think we're going to be sluggish. I think we're going to be defensive. I think we're going to wake up until the second half. Um, and do you know what? I'm actually okay with that as long as we get the points. I, I, I am in a, This is a complaint-free zone. As long as we get the points, that's what I'm saying. Oh, did you do, do the you poll? Did you do a poll? I did do a poll. Yeah, I did do a poll. We asked how you felt about the starting eleven, oh. uh, and it was very strong in one direction. Let me see if it's still there now when it refreshes. It stayed like that. Okay, so we asked, uh, "How do you feel about the starting eleven? I love it. I like it. I dislike it. I hate it." Two uh, percent of people said they hated it. Eleven percent of people said that they loved it. Fifteen percent of people said they disliked it, and seventy percent of people said they liked it, which is maybe the most it's ever been in a That's single a category this year. That's a it's big. It's big. It's big. Good. Surprisingly, but I'm. But listen, if the people are positive about it, then I'm here for it. You know what I mean? I'm not. Mm. I'm not here to, you know, poo poo anyone. I'm here for it. Why not? Your your t shirt. I um initially before I saw his writing on it, I thought that was like a Ribena stain. At the top. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. something on it, but yes. Yeah, no, there's a lot of other stuff going on down here, but yeah. Okay. No. Fair, fair enough. That would do. I'm fair not, enough. I haven't been around a long time. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a generic sort of apple and black currant cordial in the house somewhere, but. An actual Ribena? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. They start muck. I've got to be honest with you, right? 
I start they mucks around with all these drinks. So I was in McDonald's a while. Well, I say well, I wasn't that long ago. And what I wanted was a was a Sprite or a Seven Up or a lemonade or something. Yeah. All, all sweeteners. They didn't have any lemonade or Sprite, or whatever, with sugar in it. No full fat one. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, you know, and and I said, well, you not got any? I said no, no. We've only got the healthy options. Well, hold on a minute. You've got a load of chemicals in there that you don't even bloody know. Let's be fair. You don't even know what it's so sweet. Read, read the ingredients. That is that is subjective, whether that crap is healthy anyway. I, I'd rather stick with the sugar, actually. Um, I couldn't, none of it at all. And they started mucking around with Ribena, so I stopped doing that. You can barely get it. The one thing they do, because I, I found this out, the only thing they do is um, is a, a full-fat Coca-Cola. But that's bloody horrible. That's terrible for you, anyway. You get a water. I'm, I'm remembering. Do you remember in about 20... I want to say it was 17 or 18, probably 18. Do you remember that day that KFC ran out of chicken? <laughs> I, 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 I remember the news. I Yes, I wasn't there on the day, but yeah, I remember. It, it was just pandemonium everywhere. Brilliant. Just people Brilliant. talking about how KFC ran out of ch chicken. And there was that one, I think it was, I want to say it was on ITV News potentially. There was like, they had the Vox Pops of like going and interviewing people outside KFCs or whatever about what they felt about them running out of chicken and it was in the intro bit and they're like dong dong the little like dong dong and they go chaos today as kfc uh, runs out of chicken and there was this just this one woman who harry redknapp-esque was in a car oh, clearly nice. driving out they stopped her window wound down and she just goes i've had to go to burger king as if it was like the biggest like thing ever yeah, yeah, and as yeah. you were talking about it i could not just see yeah. that woman in my head it's one of my Bro, favorite that is, that is like news quotes i've ever seen is, in my life just the fantastic. way she delivered it everything it was so perfect yes yes like 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 she's had to crawl through the sewer <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I, you know yeah yeah absolutely um i prefer a burger king by the way i was gonna i would say the same thing before you go I have, I'm running a poll on Ward Prowse. We yeah. need four categories. We're obviously putting world class and average in there. What are the others? World class, average. Yeah. Premier League standard crap. Okay. There we go. Love that. Love that. That's all I need. Really standard. Standard and then crap. Just no messing on that last one. Just four letters. Bosh. I'm, 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 I mean, that is that's something else. I'm thinking of like we we buy any car running out of cars and stuff like. That. I do think it is newsworthy. <laughs> it's just it. I mean, I guess it's the, it's like the one thing they do. So the fact that they run out of it, but it was just for sure, for sure, yeah. it's the fact it caused such a yeah such yeah. A, a, a hubbub. No. Yeah. I bet they didn't run out of all chicken as well. I bet it was just like the fillet things. I bet they still had some popcorn I, chicken or something going on. I went to so we so this is why I remember it so clearly as well because the person the person I worked with at the time we used to go to lunch every day together and he would go to the KFC because he could get you could get like a lunch box for like two pound or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we went to the KFC in Wood Green at the top of Wood Green by the tube station, and there was like a little A4 piece of paper on the front door. I said, yeah, sorry, we've run out of chicken, so we're closed. And you couldn't even get in. <laughs> I, do you know what? It reminds me of a... I don't have anyone... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going for a really, really small section of the audience here. So down uh, sort of on the on the Hampshire-Dorset border, near Ringwood, oh, there's a place called... We're getting real niche. I'm loving there's a place called There's a place called Verwood, right? Mm. And as you come out of Verwood and you head to this place called uh, Westmoors, so I, I'm wondering if... Um, if anyone's still with me here, uh, there's this place that si uh, sells eggs, free range eggs. And it was always. So, you've and said was this, this on the show before, haven't you? Was, was, I don't place. know. I don't know. But it was, it was, so it was, the sign is always there. Free range eggs. And it was like an honesty box. It help yourself, free range eggs, whatever, half a dozen eggs for, for a pound or whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. And this sign was just there. They'd obviously run out of eggs. Now, rather than take the sign away, <laughs> On top of the sign that said free range eggs, they put a different sign that said no eggs. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was I, I it was so good. I stopped and 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 took a photo. I took a photo. And the thing was, somebody said, What were you what are you doing? And they've got no eggs. I said, No, no, I know they've got no eggs. I'm taking a photo. He said, Why are you taking a photo of it? I said, Because it, it's easier just to take the sign away that advertises the eggs for sale, then no one would think twice of it. He said, Yeah. <laughs> 
but they got no eggs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so there you go. If anyone's I'm, ever uh, been, uh, pro probably not. Um, oh, there you go. Chippy, of course. Chippy lives in Bournemouth. He'll, he'll know it. He'll know it. There. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Um, yeah. No eggs. Um, so anyway, <laughs> no extra time today. Uh, but it probably, it probably will be. Probably will be ten minutes of injury time and or something be like that. Way too much. It'd be great. What's your score? What was your score? Well, you said one one. I think you're probably right. I'll say something else to be different, but I'll say nil nil to be different. I, do you know what? I think you're right though. What you said about it being all about points. I think here's the thing: if we get a good if we get a good performance out of it and we don't lose, then I will take it, thinking, oh, this can carry through to Thursday. But if we lose, then I don't really care if it's a great performance or not because that doesn't do us any good. And if we play horrendously but we get the three points, then I'll be equally as I'll be buzzing about that. That's fine exactly with right. me as well. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's one it's we're in a weird position with this one, Gonzo. So we'll see. But I I I agree with you one one. But I'll say nil nil just to be different. But I agree with you one one to be fair. There we go. Right then, one one it is. Enjoy enjoy your time with these lovely uh, patrons. Good luck on your match bingo, sir. You, and sir. Um, I've got mine. I've got mine ready to go. I wanted to win the new Newcastle the Newcastle Tottenham one. The price pot for that yesterday was like twelve hundred quid. I know. I was one. I was one doobry away from it as well. I've uh, been one. I've been one away a couple of times now. Yeah. It's, it's killing me. It is, killing and I wouldn't me. mind if no, if if nobody had ever won, I'd think, oh, do you know what? Everyone gets within one. But to see so many people. So when Gio said the oh, other day, oh, let us know. Gio said in the video, let us know. He said, write in the comments. We started getting emails from people as well. Um, you know, say, oh, by the way, I won. You know, what I mean? and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, oh man, you know, I think that I think that full house, the full house is like five hundred quid, and they've played out with two full houses and all the rest of the But anyway, I'm gonna win today. I can feel it in me. Yeah. What's it? Well, um, enjoy your what's it. Uh... Cheers. <laughs> it's just not as grand as what Gio's eating. Anyway, I'll catch you later. See you later. Thank you. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Gonzo, what a man. What a specimen of a human being, you know what I mean? If we could all be like Gonzo, what time that would be. Um, but hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Hope you're good. Hope you're having a grand old day. It is, of course, I don't want to get you overexcited. I don't want to get you all giddy and hyped about this, okay? But uh, we, it might be time for some more association football, you know what I'm saying? It's West Ham versus Fulham in the Premier League, the, the Barclays Premier League. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big game, as Gonzo was just saying. It's one of those ones where... I could take it many different ways, and I probably will take it many different ways, but it is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy to think about how big this game has become. You know, when it when we, when it was put in the middle of the the two the two Leverkusen matches, I thought, okay, that that, that kind of does us all right. It means we can kind of move things around and not have to worry about it. Blah, 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 blah. Man, all of a sudden, it's gone absolutely wild. It's gone absolutely crazy. Um I don't even know how to feel about it right now. I don't know how to feel about it, but we'll see as the game plays out. Let's start asking how you do on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being the least confident possible, 10 being the most confident possible. How confident are you of a West Ham result today? Do let me know. Uh, and while we do that, let's run through the teams with a little bit, a little bit more depth, shall we? Um, that James Paul Prowse poll is currently rocking. It's currently rocking a very expected result. We'll see how it goes. It's currently rocking a very respected. This feels like one of those hostages. Do you remember? What was her name? There was a beauty vlogger and there was everyone saying. Don't remember, we don't need to go into it. We don't, we don't need to go into it. Um, the, the people who were on YouTube about seven, eight years ago were not up to uh, West Ham lineup as such. It's an interesting one. Fabianski starts in goal with Sufal, Mavropanos, Aged, and Emerson in defence. Ward, Prowse, and Alvarez probably start in a double pivot with some formation of Pakatar, Kudus, Antonio, and Ings around it. Now, you could take this many, many different ways. It could be a 4 4 2. It could be a 4 1 4 1. It could be a 4 2 3 1. It could be a 4 4 1 1. There's lots of different ways in which this could go. I saw Connor earlier saying apparently Antonio is on the left. I think it's either Anto I think it's a four two three one with Antonio on the left, or a four two three one with Danny Ings in the ten. Um, I don't know how I feel about either of those. 
Notable exceptions, uh, notable ab absences at least, Suchek and Zuma. Neither of those start despite being in the squad. Um, Suchek is the most surprising one. Zuma, I think, was only a matter of time before he didn't start. And this kind of shows that we're prioritizing the Leverkusen game, which I'm not necessarily against, but it's a difficult one. Suchek is the shocker to me. Um, I'm shocked that he would play Ward Prowse over Suchek, if I'm being honest. But that's where we're at. No Phillips once again in the squad. Um, and a place for Earthy once more. Um, which is a bit shocking as well. Uh, seven says Harry. Five, seven, three, five, uh, six, six, six. Bloody hell. Uh, seven, uh, eight, eight, eight. We're getting older. We're getting older things there. Uh, three, ten, six point eight six. Uh, four, um, eight, zero. Uh, seven, my guy says over Mars. Mark himself. Um, is it still Barclays? It's a good point. I don't know. My gut says it is, but I might be wrong about that. Um, six out of ten, six, eight, eight, minus infinity with Moise in the dugout, says Rex Moto Monday. Uh, huge, huge. Uh, I should say, sat, I haven't watched the video yet, by the way. Um, we do have bells. First thing to say, actually, we have bells. There are bells available if we need them. Um, second thing to say, I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to be watching it after this, but sat on his channel the pocky punk uh which is the channel name is right there has uploaded his latest video sat's a, a, a wonderful man in general you should definitely subscribe to him because he's great secondly you should subscribe to him because his videos are good thirdly his latest video has myself and gonzo in it so you know if you're a hammer chat person go check it out um that's insane by the way that's just madness i can't believe that's even a thing uh using basic maths i have concluded that today i am this confident one plus 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 one. Is that eight? Nine? Seven? Somewhere in that ballpark. Somewhere in that. Um, we'll see. We'll see, Brendan. My gut says no. I'm happy to get into it more and watch along with this properly going. But my gut says my gut says no. I think it's purely a, a, a momentary a momentary hubbub and then it plays off but listen jack Perry's reaction on that new japan show which was great by the way um maybe proves that potentially right but we'll see uh swindon is saying seven three one to the irons ings kudos and a gerd big you gotta respect it the bench uh if you haven't seen it uh hdr i'm assuming you saw the video if not go watch it uh the bench uh if you haven't seen it already down the bottom is anang uh ogbonna corne cresswell Earthy, Johnson, Mubama, Suchek, and Zuma in positional order. That is Anang, Johnson, Cresswell, Zuma, Ogbonna, Suchek, Corne, uh, uh Sorry, Earthy, Corne, and Mubama. It's, it's, it's... I don't know how to... I, it's, I like the bench. I do like the bench. I'd consider it. I'd, I'd certainly consider it, Jeff. In fact, I'll try to remember to buy some. Will I? Probably not. Um, I'll try to remember it now. Good to see you, Mick. Good to see you, Mick. It's, it's a balanced bench. It's something I like. Now, is it balanced in terms of what they'll be used? No, of course not. We know this. It's but it's balanced in terms of positions. And that's all I can really ask for, because usually we don't get that. Um, Fulham's lineup is as such. Leno starts in goal with Castagna, Tosin, Bassi, and uh, Robinson in defence. They have Palinia and Lukic in midfield with a, with a three behind Munez of Iwobi, Andres Pereira, and Willian. Uh, their bench, Rodak, Diop, Reed, Carney, Dickledover, Reed, Wilson, Adama, Broya, and Raul Jimenez. It's the oldest starting 11 versus the second oldest starting 11 uh, in the season. Well, I, I don't know how this exact 11 is, but the the record oldest 11 this season is Fulham's, and the second is West Ham's. So it's the oldest, the two oldest squads in the league going head to head, um, which will be interesting to see who comes out on top. Uh, and with just over five minutes to go, I'd ask you at this point. For no more flipping, no more flopping, no more sitting on the fence. Let's get those final score predictions in. Drop them in chat and we will lock them in. You know? We'll lock them in. Skits, good to see you. So how, how are you? I hope you're well. Uh well James I <laughs> I think he will score when it would it be a season? Probably not. We're probably too late at this point. But I, maybe he will. Maybe he will. Like a last final day thing where he does it. He gets the record and all that sort of stuff. Maybe. I don't know. I feel it. But but I, <laughs> it's it's difficult to justify. I think he will break the record at West Ham. I saw someone earlier ask this. Whether he'll break the record. He will do it. But it's just a case of 
we have a manager who doesn't win a lot of free kicks in the areas where you can realistically shoot from. Um, just because of the style of football we play and the, the directions in which we attack and all that sort of stuff. Do I think he'll do it? Yes. Will he do it this season? I'm doubtful, but I could see a situation which it happens. See a situation that happens. Um, Simon Simon has decided to let Moyes cook. Just seen the lineup. Danny Ings. Okay, I'll give Moyes a chance to see what happens. I, that it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild. Um, let's have a look at some of these score predictions. Three one two nil. Two one two two. Three one three one. Three nil two nil. Oh, sorry, two one three nil. Two one nil nil. Um, yeah, that was that was wild. I don't watch UFC, right? I just had it on in the background um, while I was working last night. I don't I don't watch UFC. I don't. I don't pretend to know what's going on most of the time. Same with boxing. I, I watch the big fights in boxing and that's it. And UFC, I wouldn't even say I watch the big fights, right? And for some reason, I turned on... It was on TNT Sports, right? So I turned it on right before that fight. And the end was crazy. <laughs> the end was madness. Ashley's gone with a 1-1-2-2-3-2-3-1-1-1-0 one, one, two, two, three, two, three, one, 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 uh, to West Ham, says JR. 2-2, two, two, says Ralph. Uh, three nil to the iron says dean uh Har harry's gone with a three one 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 says cares two two says daniel chuck is at a four confidence level good to see you sir how are you i hope things are good with you uh one one two one three uh two sorry two one two nil uh james will on the ball seven off the ball five i reckon you know that's significant well first of all you need one goalkeeper on a bench. Let's just, if you don't have a goalkeeper, it's unbalanced. How can you, <laughs> I love how easily triggered some people are. Secondly, right, that, I, I refuse this. This is the most balanced bench we have had all season by a significant, by a significant manner, you know? Now, would I have less centre backs? Yeah, sure. But like, we ain't got any other players. So <laughs> at that stage, it just is what it is. But I, that's, that's the most balanced bench we've had all season. I don't really care. Um, Right, let's be three minutes away from kickoff and people are still loving their score predictions in, by the way. There are definitely ways you can watch the game. Of course, it is not live on UK television, so if you do want to wish to watch it, you can scroll down into the link in the description below. There's a bit there called Join Our Discord. Lovely Hammers Chat West Ham community fans of all clubs are, of course, welcome, but more importantly, on the left-hand side, there's a bit called Stream Links, in which you will find what you're looking for. I am in North Idaho today, which means I will be slightly further behind you than usual, or maybe maybe lots further, I don't know. Sunday tends to be a bit, and a Saturday for kickoffs, so let's be real about it, but still far behind you. However, there is a timer in the top corner, which says exactly how far behind you I will be. However, one place I won't be behind is on Match Bingo. Our sponsor for the stream today, uh, lovely app, it is betting, so you do have to be 18 plus and bet responsibly, although instead of being able to put whatever amount on, you get a bingo card, which costs you £2, you have 15 things that could come up, for example, this one says, one minute of injury time, we're going to get that, let's be real, that's going to happen, that one's going to be in for me, for example, West Ham, kick off a half, that one, guaranteed to happen, there's loads of different things here, for example, direct woodwork hit, no goal, that seems like something Curtis could do. And it ticks them off automatically as you go. And then whoever gets a one line first wins £25. Whoever gets two lines first wins £50. Whoever gets a full house wins £100. And there is a bonus pot for a second full house winner for £100. If you are interested in using Match Bingo, use the link in the description below. It helps us out massively. But thank you very much to Match Bingo for helping us out. Let's try and get the North Idaho Independent television service working properly um it's interesting because like for example nh right saying one one i'm i feel like i'm more negative than people today do you know what i mean i don't like the lineup i don't i don't like the lineup i don't find it's it's kind of convinced me that we don't we're not going to win um whereas usually i find myself being potentially more positive than people today i'm finding it the opposite way around and i, I don't have to i don't know what to do with myself i feel like i'm uh i'm not gonna lie i feel like I, I feel a little bit lost about it i feel a little bit uh i don't know i just feel a bit all over the shop and i don't know i don't know how to feel about it because i'm looking at the score predictions and there's certainly a sort of uh there's sort of more confidence than not in terms of, or, or more confidence than me, there's a lot of draws going on, but there's certainly some people like Artel, for example, going with 3-1, Evan going with 2-1, 2-0, like that, for example. 
I feel like it's I feel like it's very different today, and I don't know what to do. Uh, love that, Lee. I back it. I back it strongly. Uh, Kez saying, I think it's the best team we could do. Yeah, I guess what Gonzo said, he's probably correct, right? The idea of, look, if he's not playing Suchek, then Suchek can't play. <laughs> like, like, and potentially something similar with, um, potentially something similar with, with Zuma as well, right? He's probably correct in that. I don't make Gonzo incorrect. So maybe, so maybe, maybe that's the logic. And if that is the logic, then this is probably is the best team we could play, right? But it's, I don't know, I, I, there's something about it that's just, that's just telling me no. And I, and, and I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it, well, I know what it is, but maybe you're right. I think probably Kez is probably right. I think I'll make Gonzo around it as well. Anyway, let's hope this one's stable. I, I will, of course, be slightly behind you. Despite the fact it will have kicked off at the London Stadium, I will be slightly behind you due to the way these things work. However, just described how I feel before every game. Yeah, Sonny, you see, this is what I mean. I think I'm usually more positive than people, but today I don't know why. It's just, we'll see. Listen, as Gonzo said, if we get a win this game, I don't really care what the performance is. I'll be, I'll be absolutely buzzing with it going into Thursday. If we get a good, if we get a good result, sorry, if we get a good performance, then I'll be happy. So there's a couple of different ways this could go, and I'm I'm just hoping it's not a loss. That's the one I don't think it'll go for. But the team's taking knee before the match. It's West Ham United versus Fulham in the Premier League at the London Stadium, and we're underway. Deploy the boys. It's time to run. Two things indeed. Come on, you irons. Shout out to Peach as per usual. Danny Ings will score then Antonio. Come on, Danny Ings. Show us what you've got. I love this. I love this from people. I don't, I don't I'm, not, I'm not a guy who's uh I'm not a guy who's a old Paqueta already showing off, flicking over someone. Nice little flick through to Emerson. Him and Emerson, after the yellow card, sort of probably going to have a lot to do in this game. Is Emerson definitely banned for Thursday, by the way? We know they're both best. They're both definitely banned for Thursday, right? Nice little flick over the head there from Paqueta and it will be straight out of the game. So, right, as, as we go forward with this, let's try and figure out this formation. Antonio is very central, as is Danny Ings. Danny Ings notably deeper. Pacatar does really well, flicks it across. Mo Kudus at the back post is going to have to go and collect it as it goes over the top of everyone. Pacatar looking sharp early. Kudus tries to whip it in towards the back post. No Fulham player gets touched, nor does Mikel Antonio is going to go out for a goal kick. Pacatar looking lively out of the game. Looking lively out of the game. Uh, they're both looking very central. Danny Ings and Mikel Antonio. Pakatar's definitely on the left and Kudus is definitely on the right. But those two those two are looking very central and it's feeling, if not 4-4-2, if not 4-4-2, it's feeling very 4-2-3-1 at least with Danny Ings in the 10. But we'll have to see how it plays out a little bit further. We'll see how it plays out a little bit. Looks like two up top to me. Timer is... Is that one second? Yeah, I'm gonna. My thing's skipping around a bit, so I'm gonna have to change this a couple of times just to, while it hopefully calms down. Um, I hope. There we go. Again, again, that's another one. That's again being back is scary to me. God, I hope he's right. Gami Shing's hat tricks by seventy five. Listen, if we got three, uh. Danny Annie Ding's goals. I would be buzzing, Steve. I would lose my rocker. I don't think it's possible, West Ham, but I would go absolutely balmy. Uh, I see what's going wrong with the timer. The timer's going to be jumping around a little bit, but it should work consistently now. I see what the issue was. I hate the way that works. Thank you, Herpy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Sufal gets him around the back. Vagami, Sufal takes him around. Oh, Antonio. Oh, my God. He's absolutely skied it. He's absolutely skied a wonderful opportunity. First of all, Vladimir Sufal with an insane long, a long cross-field pass. Big diag from uh, Lucas Pakatar. Who else? Into the path of Sufal. Runs in in front of uh, Ant uh, Anthony Robertson. Gets in. Manages to take it round Bassi. And he just can't quite get the shot away. It's an unreal opportunity from him. And he does incredibly well to craft it. But 
Leno gets his hand to it to tap it away, and Mick and Antonio are rushing onto it. Has a, it's, it's, Leno is on the floor, just keep it down, and he absolutely rugby skies it. It's good, but for us, it's bad. <laughs> I can't believe that's happened so early. We look, we're starting really well here. Danny Ings with a nice little spin, lays it out wide to Sue Fowl on the right-hand side, looks to try and dink it across. It's going to be a corner. I love this opening from us, though. Love this opening from us. Yeah, the time's working good now. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it stays all right. And my things, my North Idaho TV network is uh, stable right now as well. Um, so, yeah. Corner, short. Nice. I, I, I don't mind a short one. Could have goes with a shot. Oh, I was destined for that top corner. I thought, nice little, nice little short corner kick routine. I could take that. I could take that. Kudos goes across to take it, looking for the in-swinger. James Will Prowse's short option as well. Fulham completely caught a little bit by surprise by it. Pass back from James Will Prowse to Kudos just on the edge of the area. Dribbles slightly closer to the D, and when, he, when he's in a little bit of a better shooting angle, unleashes one in it. It was close to that top left-hand corner. Not bad. Not bad. I'll let you know if this one, if this one conks out. Literally, as I said that, it stopped. But we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. But I might be calling upon you, sir. I might be calling upon you to uh, fix the area, as it were. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be aerial time. It might be aerial time. Uh, I definitely, Richard, wasn't watching it in... How do I word this? It definitely wasn't this. If you see what I'm saying. It definitely wasn't that. Hmm? No? How are you feeling now? Oh, I can fucking hear it. I just can't see it. <laughs> Which is, is a lot of what I need right now, is the, the visual aspect. Are you going to do anything else here? Do this. Is this gonna work for me? Probably not. Anyway, that's it. We've started well. We've started well. I'm not angry about the way we started at all. Um, lots of vim and vigor. I mean, this is the thing. As much as I don't want to see Danny Ings in a number ten position necessarily, I don't know how many options we have. I mean, James or Prass, I don't want to see deeper as well. So I'd probably put James or Prass to CJ. Blah, blah blah blah. But I feel like. We do at least have something there. Um, and he has performed well in that position. It's not like he hasn't. So, to a certain extent, I do think there is a... Uh, I do think there is something to doing that. And it shows. I mean, we've started well. we started very well. Right, we're back now. It's corner to West Ham yet again. James or Prowse this time to take it. Same side. Swing it to the back post. Maverick. Oh, again, gets a shot. Oh, I thought I was in. I thought it was in. Hits the side netting from Lucas Pakatar. Corner from the same side. We just created a chance for Mohamed Kudus. This time, instead of a short corner kick routine, it's James Prowse just straight takes it, whips it out swinger towards the back post. The Gerds there can't quite get any header, can't quite get any purchase on the header. It drops to Lucas Pakatar just behind him, who hits it first time and ricochets off the side of the netting. But it was one of those ones where certain parts of the crowd, including myself, thought it was in. And Fulham have possession of the ball. It does... It does feel... I don't know, Danny Ings is very far forward, isn't he? So maybe it isn't 4-2-3-1. Maybe it is 4-4-2. Because they both are very far forward. Lucas Pakatar. No foul, he says. Flicks, flicks the ball over, uh, I think it's Palinia, but referee says nothing doing on that one. Ball from... It, We'd be looking for Munez round the box and he smashed it in 
Fulham have taken the lead and it's Andreas Pereira with the goal. So, oh, simple. Ball gets played in towards uh, Munez, who tries to hit it. Doesn't quite work out. Lands to Pereira, who can take one touch around the goalkeeper and smash it home. It's 1-0. After an incredibly strong start. Gio often says, show me a goal, and I'll show you a mistake. And I don't know exactly where the mistake was in that, but it was somewhere. Prakatar goes down too easily under the challenge. It is what it is. It's under it's Pereira who foul, takes him out as well. It's not foul. Iwobi plays the ball into the path of... I know he's Matt Pereira. Maybe that's Pereira. Anyway, Iwobi dinks the ball in. Mavropanos can't get the... That's what it is, right? Ball gets played across. Big crossfield diag from Iwobi on the counter-attack. Mavropanos at full stretch. Full stretch in the air. Tries to get the control. Can't. It bounces into the path of Andreas Pereira, who first touch takes Ralph Fabianski and then slots it home brilliantly. M Andreas Pereira does really well once he has the opportunity. He takes it wonderfully. And after we've just had all of these opportunities that we've just flopped, to go 1-0 down like that is frustrating, to say the least. <laughs> Ten minutes gone. Uh, it's Fulham 1, West Ham United 0. Who's captain? It is Lucas Fabianski for us, uh, Malk Star, and then for Fulham, it is Leno. Crap. Crap. Should have tried to clear it rather than controlling it when you're full stretch. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I would go as so far, M. Collingwood, I would go as so far as to say you should have done literally anything else. I might be being a bit harsh about it, but I'm like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, just toe punt it into touch, leave it for the goalkeeper. I, I don't know, it was just. Just do anything else. Ball gets played in from the same side again, but this time West Ham have the numbers back and again can easily head that one away. It will be cuts inside though, plays it back out with the, the, the thread of through ball and again just watches that one out for a goal kick. So a mountain to climb, mountain to climb with 10, 10 minutes gone, 1 0. And a goal which we really shouldn't have given away. Fabianski taking the short goal kick straight to a gad. Annoying, really, really annoying. Yeah, the thing is, is I don't, Richard, Richard saying maybe Maverick Panel should put his foot through that. It's, he, he was in a difficult position, but it's just like he reaches up to try and control it. So he can't have been playing it back, back to the goalkeeper because it would have been with his foot. So he must have been trying to control it or clearing it. And so it's either a poor clearance or a poor control. So like, and I don't know what, maybe you just jump up and head it away. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I need to go back and rewatch it a couple more times. But West Ham have possession of the ball. Alvarez. Finds Danny Ings again dropping deeper into those positions. Whether it's a 4 1 1, a 4 4 1 1, a 4 2 3 1, a 4 2 4 4 2, doesn't really matter. He's the one who's licensed to drop maybe a little bit deeper, and Michael Antonio hangs a little bit further forward. Kudus, nice little cut outside of Willian there, under a bit of pressure. Pakatar floating across to the right hand side to get involved. Alvarez losing out on the ball, very advanced position there to lose out on the ball from Alvarez when your partner is James Will Prowse, who's terrible in those sort of positions. What the heck are you doing, Magic? Please get back. Please get back. Calvin Bassey plays it forward to Anthony Robertson out wide on the left hand side. Good defending from Kudas, just snaps in there, makes sure they can't go any further forward, and it's pushed all the way forward, back, back from their perspective, forward from ours. Yeah, that's kind of what I, I'm trying not to get too depressed about it because there is so much more time to go. I think Rand says, I think you're right. Again, the pressing isn't bad here. Fulham passing it around at the back relatively dangerously. And the pressing's not bad. Mikel Antonio letting him get past him a bit easy there, but he manages to get back and force him back. Calvin Bassi does really well there. Oh, and that's a brilliant ball forward. Looking for... 
Looking for Willian. He's got people arriving in the centre. Willian tries to pull it back across. Pereira hits it. It's almost too a great counter-attack from Fulham. Just spending their time. This is this is why pressing is dangerous. And you have to be careful when you do it. Because we get caught out there. We're pressing too high up the pitch. We're not doing it well enough. Calvin Bassey, just one little touch, takes it round Kudus. We've got too many people forward. And they zip a beautiful pass forward to Willian. And all of a sudden, our entire team is sprinting backwards. Because our line is so far up because of the press. And they're in behind us and honestly could do better there andreas Pereira, and probably should do better at least get that on target it could be 2-0 to fulham dangerous with we're getting caught out pressing in a silly silly way and it's it's well done from Fulham. it's well done from fulham you have that slow pass slow pass so pass sort of gr just drag us in drag us in drag us in pa -pa 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 go no no waste on time on the go that's why always, how often in these watch longs do i say we have to counter-attack quicker or they have to counter-attack quicker. It's the big, big thing that's effective against us. If you just like, if you you can take your time and build up from the back, pardon me. You can spend all the time you want in the final third, but you've got to zoom when you get the ball. And that's what they're doing really well right now, Fulham. And it's terrifying. We have Mavropanos and Aguirre, who in theory should be good enough and fast enough to be able to pay that higher line. But to be honest with you, both of them have <laughs> both of them have mistaken them. And when you're sprinting backwards full force, it becomes a very difficult conversation. Mikel Antonio does well though. Out on the left-hand side, looking to take on his man. Beats him. Crossing takes a big deflection. And he lets that bounce out for a corner. We'll take that. We'll take that. Decently done. Decently done. Castagna just holding up Mikel Antonio there and getting the block. Again, this is what I'm talking about. When we have these conversations about pressing and high blocks and low blocks and all this nonsense, right? Realistically, when you look at it, that's the kind of danger. That's the kind of danger you face when you play a high line, when you're playing, when you're pressing, you're playing a high line. That's the kind of dangers you're going to face. And if the team can counterattack effectively against you, like we do against oppositions, it's, it's, it's easy almost. James Rob Prowse put the in swinger into the usual position. Obviously doesn't work. Punched away. We still have possession of the ball though, so that's better than usual. Could have looked to whip it back across. That's not bad. Header on target, but with no power really from a Gerd and it's easily collected from uh, Leno. And now they're looking to counter attack again. It won't be on the ball. I think it's Wobi. Wobi's got stocky, isn't he? Wobi's got real stocky. Could have magic coming. Listen, Daniel, I'll take it. I'll take it. Fulham playing it around at the back again. Judas, my trustworthy friend. Good to see you, sir. I don't know, Richard. It's difficult to say. Difficult. Sorry, Neil. Stress, in it? It's just pure stress, Neil. Big pump forward doesn't work, but thankfully could have picks up the drop. Oh, it's back at all, just... Just lacking slow Palinia, just nipping in there. And a poor pass. The early signs from Pakatar getting looking lively and looking attentive. He's still getting involved, but he's just that little bit off pace. Just I can't tell you a poor pass, but you expect it. Uh just that little bit off pace, which just isn't needs to be a bit more switched on. No, I 100% agree with you, Yami. Shot from range from Fulham straight into the hands of Fabianski. He collects that one relatively easily. Not straight into his hands, but he collects it easy enough. I 100% agree with you, Yami. I just don't agree with you, which is why I think we I think we've been a lot better at pressing this year than we have been previously. But that was just kamikaze stuff. That we were so far forward, and again, we should know that. Look, I haven't seen Fulham, so I don't know how they're going to play. But it, if this is how they're usually playing, then we should be aware of that and maybe not playing to their hands. Especially when I watched the flipping fan opposition preview that Geo did. Tried to whip it into the box, doesn't quite work. Super fan on the edge of the box, corner quadrant, right hand side. Poor pass, but we still possession. Especially when I watched that opposition preview Geo did with the, um, I can't remember his name, but the guy from the Fulhamish podcast who was really good. Um, and he was like, yeah, if you, teams who sit deep against us really do really well. And we're a team who are really good sitting deep. So what do we do? We come at them. Excuse me? Excuse me? Anyway. <laughs> Packets are on the ball. Wide on the left-hand side. He's got options inside and Alvarez, who he gives it to. 
looked like he was ranging for a shot, but it's Kukic just came flying out and stopped him. Back to Warprouse takes a shot from range, and I tell you what, it was well struck, but wasn't difficult for Leno to collect. Well struck from far away. Strikes it through the legs of Jao Polinia, but it's in the end an easy one for Leno to collect. Long ball forward from Fulham. Aguirre does well just to battle with Munez there. We pass it back into danger. What the, what the hell are we doing? I'm, I, I should say now, by the way, I am massively sleep deprived today. I have not slept. So I'm more prone to saying things I wouldn't usually say. So I apologise in advance. Now that this came right away, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> what <are> we did? <laughs> Why is any of this happening? Pereira to take free kick wide on the right hand side, basically on the touch line. About, I don't know, 40 yards away from goal or so, something like that. It's a long way. Going to be one of those deep corners, essentially. Pereira whips it in. Ooh, it was almost a header in the box there from a Fulham player. Can't quite get on the end of it. The pass back finds Robinson and Fulham more than happy to begin the horseshoe. Again, more than happy to pass it back. Danny Ings follows Leno for the press by himself. Don't forget the poll. Kez, thank you very much. Let's have a look. What are we saying? Let's end this poll and just see where we're at. And I tell you what, we'll start another one. Why not? Let's just go crazy with polls today. Well, while I'm there, by the way, if you could like the video, subscribe. Most consistent West Ham fan channel when it comes to when it comes to uh, watch along. So over the last Five seasons we've been doing it now, I think it is at this point. I think it's five, I'm not certain. Um, even today, like I said, not literally have not slept. Not, I haven't slept a lot. I mean, I have been up since I woke up yesterday. And yet we're still here doing it. So like the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. We, of course, have the live match for you straight after this. There we go, it's loaded. Right, Wait, War Prowse. 7% said crap. 9% said world class. 37% said average. 45% said Premier League standard. Interesting. So an average Premier League standard player, one or two, whichever you're vibing. I can respect it. I can respect it. Let's... Well. Well, I'm looking to try and cross it in. There we go. Alright, I've logged one in of what do you reckon the result will be? And maybe we'll go over another one at some point as well. Should I demolish this massive 36 <laughs> Crab Capri's mini egg bar? I mean, it's an unreal, it's an unreal bar, Dean. I can't lie to you. Uh fun fact. Um, when me and Jack were doing hamalytics, was it the last hamalytics we did or the one before that? I think it was the one before that. It was the one just after Easter. We finished recording. And we were like, oh, and then we have a little chat after the video or whatever. And Jack just pulls out one of those bars. And I went, oh my God. And I pulled out one of those bars. Big. Big. I love them. I love them. What have I missed? Uh, Fulham scored. Um... It was a terrible. It was. It was. It, it was a mistake from Mavropanos, and I would argue from Pakatar as well in the build up to it. Um, started really strongly. They've scored, and then since then, it's been. It's been pretty dead, mostly Fulham, but pretty dead. I think three one. I think.
Apparently there was offside, didn't notice it, not gonna lie. Yeah, we just, we do, I mean, he, was, he was bought for more than that, but like, we all know his best trait is free kicks, and we just don't win free kicks in those areas. And he's not worth the amount of money we paid for him without the free kicks, if you see what I'm saying. So it feels like a fool's errand when we know we don't win free kicks in those areas to buy someone to take free kicks in those areas, if you see what I'm saying. Realistically, Fulham are playing a very risky game at the back, but it's paying off for them massively. They're playing unbelievably risky at the back with their passing around, but then they just ping on the counter-attack so fast. It's brilliant to watch. I mean, uh, realistically, if West Ham were doing it, it would be people would hate it. But I I'll be honest with you. Like, it's brilliant to watch from my perspective, but it's so scary for us. I mean, we they're really tempting us to press and we're getting way too committed for it. Way, way, way too committed. And every single time they're managing to find a way to just wiggle out of it. And they will get caught out. We will get some high, if they carry on doing this, we will get some high turnovers and we'll create some chances from it. It's going to happen. I don't trust us to take it on the chances we had earlier on today, but like, man, they're good at what they're doing as well. Give me Tosin out of Rabio and Calvin Bassey. Give me him both. Give me him. I want him in my life. Bit disconnected all over the place. Yeah, yeah, 100% that. I'm bit, I fully agree. I fully agree. Big ball over top looking for Alex Iwobi. Can't quite get there. I've seen Iwobi in real life, like, not on a football pitch. Well, it was actually at some football pitches, but not, like, at a game. Um, at, like, a non-league game. Like, I was doing some video thing for him, and he was there. And he didn't look as big as that. He looks, he looks, he looks big. Fair play to that. I've always liked that. Sort of really. Bassi just passing it back to Leno. Again, this is crazy watching them. Just watch, just watching them pass it around like this is just it's insanity. Roby all the way back to Leno, who then punts it forward. Now it was a punt. That one should be ours. It's not. It's not. We've lost out of the ball somehow. I don't know how we've managed it, but we've somehow managed to lose out of the ball, which was 100% ours. Yeah, it's Willian tries to take out Sufal and Alvarez. Takes it past one, but can't take it past the other. And then tries to fight back on Alvarez. Alvarez just walks away with the balls. As Willian goes down. Bullen are complaining that he's down. And West Ham are carrying on. Well he's down. To, to huge amount of booze. So foul passes the ball out. Willian went down. He fell over. Um, trying to get the ball back off Alvarez. Um, took a big old tumble. Ended up hitting himself down. I don't. I, 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 look. I can't complain. I'm all about sportsmanship and reality, so I'm not necessarily against us playing the ball out. But at the same time, he's off the pitch. It's his own fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I can't necessarily complain. I'm, I love a bit of sportsmanship every now and then. He does fall very awkwardly on his arm, and I hope he's okay. My stream's cocked out. This is a good time to do it. What other channel? There are definitely ways you can watch it, Kate. Okay? I'm not sure what the channels are called, but there are definitely ways you could do it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I don't think he... Uh, the referee didn't stop it. We ended up passing it out. Um, yeah, no, don't get, I, don't get me wrong. I agree with you. And, like, uh, in the moment, very frustrating to watch happened. And he is... It is his own fault, because Willian is about 58 at this point. Still playing in the Premier League. Crazy. But... Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's frustrating to watch, isn't it? <laughs> it's very frustrating to watch. Sufal plays it down the line for Mikel Antonio. Back to Sufal, who whips a ball in. It's not bad. Danny Ings, who's the one trying to get his head out to it, can quite make it work. Akatar goes for something from range. Not sure what it is. And just poor again. Just silly stuff. I, I'm not keen on Akatar. Mavropanos does really well. He's nipped the ball away and play it forward. He strode forward with it. Nipped it nicely. 
strode into the strode into space. Now he's gone down. Now he's gone down, and we're just playing on. Pakatar, he's having a he's getting very frustrated right now. Pakatar. Mavropanos is back up and, and going back. We've carried on playing when Ma when Mavropanos was down. Pakatar looking to try and stab the ball through with his with the outside of his left foot there, looking just couldn't manage it. And you could see him jumping up and down out of frustration. Oh, it's one of those size ones, Deans. No, I'm talking about a slightly smaller one than that. I'm talking about a slightly smaller one than that. There's a banger. No, never, never F sportsmanship, Marky boy. You know? Doesn't matter if you're losing. We all go on about that bloody time De Canio caught a football as if it was the world's greatest thing that's ever happened. You know what I mean? Like, come on. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, do, let's get some sportsmanship involved. Now, was I very frustrated when it happened? Yes, you heard me say it, so I don't necessarily disagree with you. But, you know, if we could all go on about how he caught a football one time and how he was the greatest player ever because of it, surely, you know, surely. I don't even know who we were playing when he caught the ball or what the score was. I've got no clue. It's just the fact that he did it. The thing is, I, the thing is, I don't mind it too much today specifically because we've got Danny Ings on the pitch. I don't usually mind it anyway. The thing is, is Fulham are in a position where they're sitting deep, so really, it's not going to help us too much. Him being out there, I don't know how I feel about it, Brian. I'll come back to you. <laughs> I started saying how I felt, and then realised I might feel differently from how I think I feel. So I don't need to put that opinion out into the world. You know what I mean, Charlie? Take a minute, think about it a bit deeper. I'll talk it through out loud. Here's, here's the vibe. I like Mikel Antonio sort of just wandering. I like that wandering thing he does. You know, when he first did it, when he was first doing it four years ago, despised it with my life. Go back and watch the watch longs. Don't, it's long. But I was screaming about it. Now, I quite like it. But specifically when we're counter-attacking, I like it. We're not counter-attacking right now. We're, we're in control of the ball. And so they are, they're saying to us, break us down. In that sense, Mikel Antonio on the left-hand side, it's not going to help us. It's not going to help us. Antonio trying to get past his man on the left-hand side, can't, ends up forcing it back, and then he's just got less people in the box. But oh, Mohamed Kudus just went for an overhead kick. Super! Take the swipe at it, it goes wide. Mohamed Kudus, in the middle of all that, went for an overhead kick, by the way. Ball gets whipped in from, I think it was probably Emerson or Pakatar, given the positioning. I'm not sure who it was. Yeah, it was Pakatar. Shock. Ball in. And Kudus goes for the uh, goes for the emphatic overhead kick. Calvin Bassey, very close. It's a great ball in from Pakatar. And I tell you what, that would have been insane. And then a, a shot from Sufau. Another another opportunity goes wasting for Sufau. Is Ings playing as Robert? Yes, yeah, somehow. 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 But again, in situations where Mikel Antonio is basically playing on the left and, and Pakatar's Sort of drifting all over the shop, which means Ings gets put into the center. Guess who's isolated and does nothing? Danny Ings. Yeah. <sighs> I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Maybe, but I've got no idea. Oh, Chris goes for a shot, just can't quite make it work. Ends up, Emerson keeps it in well enough. Pakatar wide on the left-hand side, right by the corner flag in that corner quadrant. Tries to not make his man, loses out again. Getting annoyed at Pakatar. There's that sleep deprivation. There's that sleep deprivation. <laughs> Static and disconnected, yeah, I'll tell. James Ford Prowse playing deep never works. So what are we doing? We're playing him deep. Fulham, the guy's like, oh yeah, if teams sit deep against us, it usually works. So what do we do? We play high and we press. <laughs> Pakatar looking to whip it in. Antonio in the centre that time, but it doesn't reach him. 
why is Alvarez further forward than James Will Prowse at any point? It's just madness to me. I mean, I trust Alvarez to create more stuff like forward, but we're, we're playing a game when we're pressing. Why is the guy who's good at pressing sitting deeper than the guy who's really good at being the defensive midfielder when you've got these quick counterattacks happening against you and you need someone to cut them out and stop them? America, explain. America, explain. Were you out of things? I wish. I wish Jeff I was just working. I was just working. Sad times. He's playing no man's lad, middle of nowhere, Westville. Listen, we've all been there. We've all been there. Unfortunately for Danny Ings, he's there more than enough. Time for a bell. Listen, if the chat go for it, the chat go for it. It's probably early for it, but if the chat, the chat disagree, and the chat disagreed with me if, uh, already today. With the polls, you know, maybe, maybe. Time for a green team, Pocky. Listen, very, it, they were a thing. Is all I'll say. They were, they were a thing. They were a thing. There you go. Put it back. Old third kit might look nice. I'd take it. I don't mind. I don't mind third kit being something a bit different, you know, vibey, you know. Sometimes it works out with the black one, the one with it, which have that gold trim on it. And sometimes it doesn't like the purple one, you know. I don't mind a different one every now and then. Right for Panos looking for the ball forward for Mohamed Kudus. Bassi comes across and cover as well. It's a bit over hit there from Mavra Panos anyway. I tell you what as well, the other thing about that fan, oh, this is a good opportunity, and they've pulled it back because someone's down. And the West Ham fans are furious, and Pakatar is one of them, was charging through on goal. One of their players was down. Pakatar's come across to have a conversation with the referee about this. I don't know why he went down. I'm not really sure what happened, but Paulini is down, and he seems to be in pain. He's holding his ankle, and his, his, uh, his hands are over his eye. It's pulled back, I guess, for a free kick to Fulham. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened. Pakatar was striding through towards the goal there, straight down the middle of the pitch. We've now got Marco Silva who's shouting at the fourth official. Don't know whether he's saying someone should be carded or whether he's whether he's being told to calm down. I'm not really sure what happened. Let's have a look again. William plays it into Palinia. I'll be honest with you, I don't know why Palinia goes down in the way he does. Maybe it's, maybe an accidental trod on the foot there from Danny Ings. I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's a free kick. They're going to get one, but over the last couple of weeks, I've just given up trying to understand how referees work and just move on with my life. Leno on the ball. Again, Fulham just happy to try and drag us into a pressing match. Man, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. And we're already 1-0 down, so we can't just sit off and tell him to just go, go away. Sufau went flying in there. Somehow he's won a free kick off Anthony Robinson. I I'm not going to lie. He was defo the aggressor in that one. Not that that's necessarily how you judge who it should be a free kick or not. But so, so foul went... Uh, we went in... I don't know. I just, he does really nice, really nice um, flick over the head from so foul on... Robinson, but the second one, his foot was very high. I guess, I guess actually, his other foot was high as well, but still, Pereira's foot was high as well, but still. I don't know. Sufal felt. I don't think we're lucky. Now. Nice little one two down the wing from Fulham. They forced themselves into a central position, which isn't too bad, but they're out wide on. It won't be pulled back. Munoz can't hit it. Willian at the far box can pick it up. Still in the box. Hits it. I'll tell you what. Fabianski's done very well twice to stop that one. First time to stop it going in. Second time to stop them having the ball. Fabianski does really well. The pullback was terrifying. And it lands at the far post to Willian. Who cuts inside. Hits it. Fabianski reacts really well. And the second time where Fulham are trying to regain possession of the ball. And it was probably going out from Castagna anyway. But Fabianski gets a foot to it. Nicely done. He does really well there.
38th minute. Didn't realise this was happening, but uh, a round of applause around the stadium for for Dylan Tombidis and DT38. Oh my god, that was almost 2-0. That was terrifying. Bassi does really well to stop it. Uh, DT38, the foundation. Check them out if you haven't already. Um, donate if you can. Whipped into the box. There's a header from the corner. Uh, Andreas Pereira whips it in. I'm not sure who, who managed to connect with it. Is it Tossen? No, it's Munez who drops deep and Fabianski stops it. And Bassi stops it. We come back from replay. Munez hits it. Fabianski, another save. That one was... That one was too far. That one was too... That one was, that one was stress. Good to see you, Alex. Bobby. Hope you're well, bro. Alex, I have... I, I was watching the latest podcast. The one where you were talking about the trailer. Because I watched the trailer. Had some thoughts. Went to watch the podcast where you were talking about the trailer. And I have three words to say to you. And it was my big takeaway from the podcast. Up the rock. Maybe one of the more insane sentences I've heard said. <laughs> just out of nowhere. Just up the rock. And I'm here for it. A terrifying moment there. Almost 2 0 again. Munez loses out to Aguerd there, who does well. Bakatar tries to stab it through. Doesn't quite work. Played forward. Willian on the ball. They look for the counter attack once more. Willian through for Pereira. Does well to find it. Pereira ball over the top. Fabianski does well. Does very well. What do you think of WrestleMania? First of all, Ray, I love you. Hope you're well. Second of all, um, I thought the first night was was some good matches, but it didn't really hit for me. Second night hit. Second night hit. Like, obviously, this was the Bat Bailey match was the one, man. Whipped in. Head on. Danny Ings gets a flick on head of it. It's straight into the hands of Leno. Uh, but yeah, that second night hit hard. Loved the second night. Loved the second night. First night, yeah, whatever, man. But second night, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now we're, now we're, they were cooking that second night. And Raw and SmackDown were both good this week as well. Because even during this new era where everyone's like talking about how good WWE is and everything, and I'm not disagreeing with it, but like even during that time, sometimes watching Raw, especially live, is just like a slog. I'm like, man, this is three hours. There's ads all the time, blah, 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 blah. Raw and SmackDown were both good as well. I'm really, I'm really up on the show right now. I'm enjoying it a lot. The camera and the one shots. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too, me too. Whoever that, I can't remember that he mentioned to his new production guy was in the press conference. I can't remember his name was, but that guy. Give him more money. Pakatar goes down. Free kick to West Ham. Wide on the left hand touchline. Just it's not the one so far, is it? It's not the one. Thank you, mate. Let's, let's mix it. 682 people in here right now. We've got a two fair. 303 likes now. It's gone up, and I'm happy with that. I'm ha I'm happy. With 300 used to go. We're flying past it. We're doing well. We're having a grand old time. But at the same time, could always do it a little bit more. So like the video if you haven't already, please. Helps us out hugely. Helps out hugely. First night great for last two matches. Yeah, first two matches and last two matches were great. I was really upset about that Usos match, man. I wanted that to bang so hard. I was so desperate for that to just go, just absolutely smack it. And it just was not a smacker. Um, right, as I did that, skip skipped to where I just skipped it back from. Christ's sake. But first two and the last two matches were good. But that second night, I thought everything here. Yeah, I was really... I, I loved that second night. John. Good to see you, sir. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Big ball over the top. Ben, for your dad's sake, sir, I hope we win. Also, for my sake, I hope we win. But, you know, for your dad's sake as well. Big ball forward, nodded down there from Emerson. Receives the ball back from Pakatan nicely. Getting that little left link up play going a bit better. Emerson lays it into the path of Danny Ings. Tries to find it in there. Khan Alvarez lays it short to Kudus. Who, in very Mohamed Kudus fashion, decides to do too much. The shot takes a big deflection. It wrongs foot Leno, and I think it's going to be a corner. In very Mohamed Kudus fashion, they decides to do way too much, but it almost works out for him. Takes it past, I think, four, four or five players. The shot was god-awful. The deflection somehow manages to make it go from going wide to one side of the pitch to the other. Um, 
the shot was awful. But hey, listen, we got a corner out of it, so we take it. Anyone want some chocolate, Dean? I'm jealous. The answer to me is yes. Apologies, forgot to smash the like button. And listen, no apologies necessary. Chase Allcross whips it in. Head bobs it about. Calvin Bassey just sort of hooks it away. Somehow clips it back towards James Will Prowse. I'm not really sure how that's worked. It's back in. Head off. Goes wanting. Goes wanting from Danny Ings yet again. Woody, just to reply to you out loud again, again. I'll try and figure it out. I have no idea, bro. I have no idea. I, d I don't even know why you would be. Um, I'll have a look. I'll see if I can see in the back end somehow. Oh, oh. Man, I'm so close. I'm on the match bingo. All I need is... All I need is for them to... Oh, someone's already claimed the line, so I can't. I'd need a little bit more. But I'm so close on one of them. I'm so close on one of them. Wide. Alex Wobie hits it. I thought that was 2 0. I thought that was 2 0. That was a really good opportunity. Again, Fulham, it's just. We're just stretched. We're so, so stretched. Their counter attack, man, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. I'm having a little click around in the back end at the moment to see if I can figure out where the hell it would even be. Because I've got no idea, bro. Two minutes of stoppage time to go. In what is a first half, I don't want to watch again. Mavropanos does well, flicks it onto Kudus nicely, carries on charging out wide to Danny Ings. It's poor, it's going to be a God, whatever, man. It's, <laughs> whatever, it's a goal kick. Um, I just CBA. I just CBA with it, you know what I mean? Oh my lord, there's so many people blocked on this list. Yeah, the list is mad long. Oh, I think that's you. Woody, if you see it, if you see this or hear this, try again now. Try again now. Feels like an end of season, enough to play for the match. I just, I just look at it. And I'm just like, we've just, we're just, we're just not, we're just not at the races. The the effort might be there, but we're just, it's just, it's just all wrong. It's just all wrong right now. Back to Fabianski, big boot up the pitch. Flick over the top doesn't work out. Danny Ings back. Royal Prowse, Danny Ings, Pakatar, and James Will Prowse header goes wanting. Oh, hell yeah, Woody's back, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. There we go. A really nicely worked opportunity there from West Ham, played in. It's not, we've had headed opportunities come in, and you just wish it wasn't Ward Prowse or Danny Ings on the end of all of them. <laughs> Oh, I can't be asked. First half's going to be over in a sec. Leno to take the goal kick, big boot, and there is the end of the half. Uh, yeah, half time, one nil for Bullham. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. It's <sighs> what. I mean, I guess I'll talk about this a little bit more, G, in a sec, but it just frustrates me so much that I listened to the opposition preview and he goes, yeah, well, when we play against teams who sit deep, we usually do really badly. And so we've decided to press and play like a dangerous high line and just, just counter against us. And it's just, we're just all over the shop. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to, the, to what's going on there at all. 
Like, it just makes no sense whatsoever. And I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And then I watch us play, and, like, they're like, right, so break us down. Now we're one lot. You break us down. They're doing what we do to opposition teams. They're always balling us. They go, come on, break us down. And so then, like, Mikel Antonio is moving out to the left-hand side in a way that's not really going to help us in those moments. Because when he drifts out to the left, he's really fun and exciting. But that's when you're playing counter-attacking and he drifts out into that space and all of a sudden he's shifting people around and causing chaos. But when they're sat deep and just going, go on, then, that, him going out to the left is not really helping us. You're just standing in the way of Emerson and Pakatar and you're not really moving around. And we've got two up front, so you kind of think, okay, fine, so you can kind of do that because Danny Ings will take up that central role. But we all know Danny Ings can't do that role. There's just nothing about it I like. We're getting loads of headed. We get, we're getting, how many headers have we had in that half, by the way? We keep getting these headed opportunities, and yet <laughs> the guy who's really good at heading isn't even starting on the pitch. Gio, when, we, when you did the opposition preview, right, this week, which was really good, you were right when you said it was really good, and I watched it after, I was like, yeah, Gio was not lying, this is a good opposition preview. What's the one thing the guy said to you? It stuck out to me, I did, you didn't really bring it up, but it, it stuck out like a sore thumb to me. He said to you, when, you, when we play against teams that sit deep, we usually do really badly. Why are we press? What are we doing? What kind of stupid, and we can't now, because they're already one nil up, so now the onus is on us, we have to go for it. I don't know. We can't defend. We can't attack. I enjoyed the first seven minutes, Charlie. That was good. Um, first seven minutes was really enjoyable. Antonio should have scored. Apart from that, it's just been. This isn't a good Fulham team. The thing is, we've we've we we we're getting outside their box pretty easily. I, we're getting into the final third without much effort required. They're they're retreating quite quickly and allowing us to push up. But when the opposition doesn't really do much, which is what we are, you, you can defend like that. It's basically, you have the ball, what are you going to do? And we haven't really created a clear cut opportunity. Like I said, that one that landed to Antonio in the first seven minutes should be hitting the back of the net. And you watch Pereira in a different but similar kind of t type of opportunity, just be calm and composed and put in the back of the net. It's frustrating. But they, they, this game's there for the taking. We're not out of this, but we're going to have to improve dramatically after the. The, the second half. All right, we're done. This is good. To, well, I can't be asked to do it. <laughs> I'm done with this game. I, I see BA. I'm looking at it and I'm just like, bruv, we're getting moist bored. When we get moist bored with crap, there's no point in doing this. What, what's the point here? Like, this is how all teams feel against us. And this is why I'm like, it's usually fine. If we started like this, it would be fine. But now we can't do it because we're not down. What are we going to do? We can't break them down. Like, like, Big Antonio keeps drifting out onto left hand side, which usually I'm fine with. And actually, if you have Danny Ings alongside him, that might be really cool because then he moves out and then Danny Ings can move into space, blah, 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 blah. Bro, when they're sitting deep, there's no point. What's happening? Oh, Big Antonio picks the ball up a bit deeper. Okay, there's still 10 Fulham players ahead of him. What's he going to do? Dribble past all of them? No, he's not. He's going to take it to the line, realize he can't do anything, either put a crap cross in or just pass it backwards again to the person who he's just standing in the way of. It's like, bro, we're just doing It's It's madness. It's madness. And then they do what we do, which is they're like, yeah, go on, you can cross the ball in. And we're crossing it in and like, oh, Danny Higgs is getting his head on it. Oh, James Ward Prowse is getting his head on it. What's going on? This is just backwards. This is stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm done with this, bruv. I'm done. I said this to Craig Gonzo before the game. You know when you left, the thing Gonzo stayed, and we ended up talking about KFC and a bunch of other things. But the, the reason Gonzo stayed is he said, like, today's about points and nothing else. You get the points, you move on sort of thing. Yeah. And here's, here was my stance at the beginning of the game. If we lost, but we performed well, I'd be able to justify it in my head and go, right, we've at least performed well and we can carry that through to Thursday. There's something to perform. on. If we were crap, but we won, then I'm like, we're good to go. Let's go. We've got the thing. Gio. Neither. <laughs> nah, I can't do the perform well and lose. It's, it's, there's, there's no time left now. We're at the very country end of the season. There's no time to sort of make up for it. There's no... We've got, okay, well, next game we'll win and we'll claw the pack. We need to win today. It's still a must win game, even at 1 0 down at half time. I think to sum up the first half, I think Fabianski's been our best player. 1 0 yeah, down. 1 0 down at half time. I think Fabianski's been our best player. I'd, I'd be looking. I think Sufal's done okay and he's picking up his position is really good. But I do think. I'd, I'd possibly like to see Ben Johnson come on just because of the amount of opportunities Sufal's getting from an attacking sense that sure. 
I'd prefer Johnson to be striking those shots than what Sufal is. But it's not to say, I don't think Sufal deserves to be hooped per se. I think Man Panos does. My word, he's having a stinker out there today, isn't he? Um, you know, Ward Prowse is, I, I think he's got square boots on today. His first touch is very heavy. Um, Paquette has lost the ball a few times, but I've been told off by people for criticising Paquette in the last two games. So I'm not going to go in too harsh on Paquette. How well has been first. crap today? Okay, well, Bro, and you can and you can see he thinks that because I'll there was be that time where he tried to stab. I'll go to point in a sec. But he tried to stab the ball through with his left foot. It didn't work, and he started jumping up and down, annoyed. It's like, well, I got told off because apparently the reason I got told off was because it was David Moyes' fault. He was crap on Thursday, um, CBA. which you know I just I, I got a CBA. row so, so, so from people. But um, he's not been oh, very impressive. I mean, his flick his flick over a Wobi was impressive. I enjoyed that. And some of his pass has been okay, but there was another, there was one point in, in, in the first half where the pass to Ings was glaringly obvious and he didn't spot it. And then he yeah. got the ball back and then the pass to Antonio was glaringly obvious and he didn't spot that one either. And I was like, man, come on. Like, there's two... You get the ball right, they're in on goal kind of thing. And this is... Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be that. You're supposed to be that guy. You're supposed to be that guy. Um, it's listen. We can still win this game. It's going to require a drastic change of attitude. My only hope, and it's a slither. My only hope is that Wolves last week we were crap in the first half and came out in the second half much better and went on to win the game. And I don't think it would take a vast improvement to go on and get three points out of this one. While Fulham have looked okay on the attack, I do think a lot of it's been self-inflicted where we've been losing ball in stupid positions in front of our defence and I think Alvarez and Ward Prowse don't know how to play this sort of partnership in midfield that they're ne- neither of them are ever in the right position, quite often both of them are 10 yards away from where they should be and Pereira's running around um, in the acres of space but I don't think it'll take a lot to go on and win this game, it's just can we do it? I'm not so sure. Like I said, my slither of hope is we did it last week against Wolves, who I think are a better team than Fulham. Um, but you know, I think we need to get Caduce into the game more. I think we need to get Caduce, Caduce more involved. He, he's looking sharp, I think, while he hasn't done anything. And he's quite fortunate to get a corner out of his last effort that was going about 15 feet wide. But it's, I don't know. There's something about him. I think he's... he's Moving well, he's working hard, and I'd, I'd like to get him central for the second half. Actually, and get everything going through Caduceus because, yeah, I don't know how to do that though. I don't know what the makeup of the team would be. Maybe switching formation, dropping Paquette into centre midfield, and almost going like a sort of a three. I don't know really how how you would do that. Um, but I'd probably try and get Paquette central. Uh, uh, sorry, Caduceus central is what I would do. Mm-hmm. I'll be back in a second. I'll think about it. Like Thank you very much. Right, let's see what you're all saying. Um, William says, Paquette is diving too much. Um, uh, knock it on the head and play football. We really hope Man City come in for him in the summer. Um, Chippy would like to get the ball in the box and get Suchek in. Um, I'd be surprised Suchek isn't on soon, to be honest with you. Sainzer says, Suchek and Johnson on at half time for him. Kone on on the hour mark. Richard would take Suchek on for Ward Prowse. Yeah, I would as well, actually. And like Alvarez just sit quite often, more in the last 20 minutes of that half, Alvarez was getting into the box a little bit, which I understand why, because we were getting the ball out wide and having, there was no pressure on us out wide. Emerson and Paquetta were able to do three or four passes together and the cross was coming in. So it'd be nice to see Suchek in there. And if Antonio is going to drift out, out wide, then you need somebody in there with Danny Ings to just... But we've had... Ward Prowse has had a header. Danny Ings has had two headers now. So we've got one or two ways of getting in there. Hammer 99, we'd like to see a front six. Alvarez holding. Sue checking Paquette and eight. Caduce, Antonio, Cone. I wouldn't be against that. Louis says, I think we can still win this, but we have been poor. Need another second half against Wolves. Absolute must win. I agree with that. Brian says the passing needs to improve greatly. Drew says completely agree. What is Alvarez doing so far? Uh, Herapy says he hasn't seen much of Caduceus' little drives to draw fouls. BN says West Ham no idea playing attacking football because Moy's ball never trains them that way. Draw is considering stepping in. I don't know if he means in the dugout or on the pitch. I'm open to either at this point, Drawd. Let me know which one you're referring to. It may change my enthusiasm. 
Metaversal says Mav Panos stopped chasing his deflection after the first goal. It's going to cost us. Um, preview says Suchek on for the aerial ability. Bro would take Paqueta off to send a message to the team. Victory says Paqueta's giving the ball away, trying stupid passes. We need to keep it simple. And we can do this. Caduce isn't getting much luck and needs to bring him into the middle or the left to mix it up. Um, Hammer says we have to go for it because all this rubbish low block and let's just go for it. I don't think we're playing low block today, Mr. Hammer. I am I cannot agree with that whatsoever. There's no low block going on here, I think. No, I, I'm sorry. I completely disagree. I don't see that as a low block from us. I, th I think that's why we're struggling because we're almost having to play a way that we're not comfortable doing so. 50 pence would like the season to end now. Best we get is eight to go, to, uh, to go with the quarters in European football, which is an okay season. Okay. I've, I've, I've thought it through, Gio, while I was paying. Yeah. I've, I've computed it. Did you have an inspired piss? No, we're, we're done. Oh. We're done. It was, it, was a, it was a sad piss, Gio. I was peeing and I was nothing but frustrated about the whole situation. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, think, I think your assessment was pretty much bang on. I, I can't think of anything you really said that was wrong. And I feel Which like... One? I feel like... I feel like there needs to be wholesale changes. I just don't know what they are. Um, yeah. I've been uh, trying to think like... what I would like as well, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't, really, I don't really know how to do it. And I look at the bench. Like I have the bench running across the bottom screen and other people, and I just, I'm just like... It, Ings, it Weirdly, Ings is a problem here, because I don't think he's having a bad game. He's getting involved, and he's working hard. But I feel like the rest of the team's just disjointed to accommodate Danny Ings. I'm not sure he's worth disrupting the rest of the 10 in order to have him up front. And it's like I said, this is nothing on Danny Ings. I would put it down to us being unable to play with two strikers. So it's a system error rather than his issue. But I feel like if you were to take Ings off, you'd be able to then very quickly find other players for everybody else. And maybe take Cornet on for him and push Caduce into the 10, leave Paquette on the left, put Cornet on the right, and Antonio as an actual striker, and then Suchek on for Ward Prowse, so that when we are bursting forward, it's Suchek running into the box instead of Edson Alvarez. Um, so I that's maybe look, what I just I'd look do. at pace out wide, and I just think it's pointless. I, honestly, I look at the bench, and I think the two that make the most impact, well, the three that make the most impact are probably Suchek, Earthy, and Mubama. They're the three I look at, and I think that, like, Properly, like Earthy is like, like I'm not like I'm not overhyping Earthy, but I think one of the things he's actually really good at is that close control and like getting through people that way. He has that sort of like wiggliness to him, and I think in a situation where Fulham are like happy to just sit there and go come at us, having someone who can wiggle through people is good. Like I look at like it's part of the frustration with seeing Michael Antonio out wide on left. It's like he he can't do kick and run. There's nowhere to run past. You know, I feel like I don't know. I'm looking at the team. It doesn't seem to. I don't think there's any changes. It seems to be the exact same eleven that's come out. So it won't be long until Sue checks on. He'll be he'll be keen to get Sue check on. And I I would like to see him on as well, just for aerial threat. Because we've we've been picking up a few corners and they haven't looked great at defending them. We haven't capitalised yet, obviously. But I think we can yeah. expect a few more. The problem is Fulham's got goals in them as well in this half, and they've got a couple of players on the bench who could come on. And do a bit of damage with Adama Traore. Now, I'm not a big fan of him, but the uh, last thing I want to see is him breaking away on counter attacks. So, yeah. Harry Wilson can be quite clinical. Um, then you've got two strikers. I don't, Eminez, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, Broya, you know, the story's there, isn't it? David Moyes' striker scores against us. But anyway, uh, Bevel, I'll disappear and I shall return at full time, hopefully to celebrate three points. But at this rate, I just have a moan. I'll catch you in a okay. bit. Well, I'll see you then. Thank you, Gio. Everyone, make sure to come back because Gio has actual knowledge as opposed to me. He just vibes his way through rice, especially days like today, uh, where it's currently 1-0 to Fulham at half time. Second half is about to get underway at the London Stadium. Come on, you Irons. Deploy the boys. Time to run two things. Maybe the worst kickoff I've ever seen in my life there from Fulham. West Ham instantly game possession of the ball. Um, let's see what we can do with it, shall we? Uh, the answer is undoubtedly nothing, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, listen, if baby bells, baby bells are on already if, if necessary. I should have brought one with me, but I didn't. We've lost out the ball in a really bad position. Where he comes through, plays it back across. 
Alvaro, oh, Jesus Christ, Muniz managed to almost managed to score Alvarez in and around. Close from Fulham. Alvarez plays it across to Pakatan. Trying to see if there's any sort of formation change or anything like that. Doesn't feel like it. It does still feel like that 4-4-2. Danny Ings looking for the underlap off Alvarez. Picks up the ball. Manages to keep it on. Wiggles past his man somehow. Tossing around a bio. The pass from Pakatar was absolutely god-awful. And Fulham look for the counter-attack. Muniz out wide to Alex Awobi. Again, takes on Emerson. Tries to beat him one way. Tries to beat him the other. Nipped away. I'll tell you what. It was a Gerd, actually, and not Emerson. He did well to stop him the first time. And a stride and a long stretch of the leg. Terrifyingly. Manages to stop it the second time. Where it thought, my, it was destined. Destined. For, uh, for it to go off. I think he gives a crap because every time he fluffs it, he seems to get very frustrated. I think he's just in terrible form right now. Sucks because this is the game we need the most. Not even necessarily because it's a game that we need to win, although, yes, that as well. But they're sitting deep. We need to be able to break them down, and he's the guy to do it. And Yeah. Yeah, wiggliness wasn't my, gra it wasn't my best analytical moment I've ever had in my life. Um, stand by it. I think it's an accurate statement, but certainly not, certainly not, um, just no is the answer really. <laughs> Could us flicks it into the path of Michael Antonio, who somehow don't really know what happens with Cal, uh, with Bassi there, but somehow the ball ends up going out towards two foul. Doesn't quite work out. It's going to be a full, full and throw inside their own corner quadrant. Wide on the right hand side. It was a Gerd who played that pass. I thought that's what happened. I'm looking at the replay of the the uh, Munia's chance just a second ago. Well, I say just a second ago, right at the beginning and a half. Munia's almost scoring a back heel with Alvarez in there. It was a Gerd who just sort of power drives the shot into someone. Nice to see you fired up. Thank you, Joshua. It's because I've not slept. So my my usual firewalls are down. <laughs> I have no filter today. Charlie with no filter means he's just very annoyed. Apparently. Not got his head in the game. John says, Charlie, is it me or does Pakatar look like he's not got his head in the game? I don't think he's not getting his head in the game. I think he's just off it. I think he's just... Like, I, I this is the comparison I always use, right? But when Alex Song came back from his injury, the second spell he had with us, he kept doing these stupid long passes all the time, looking for these big, glamorous long passes because he's like, I'm Alex Song. I'm going to put my stamp on this game. Watch me do this. And none of them works. And it wasn't until he stopped doing it and started just playing... Nice, calm passes around where he really managed to start feeling his way back into the team and find some semblance of form. And it's like... Pakatar keeps doing this, these passes. And it's like, bruv, just keep it calm. Keep it simple. Work your way into it. And then go from there. It's... it's oh, not a bad pass there. Through for Kudus goes down in the box alongside one of the Fulham defenders. Nothing says the referee. No one really claimed for it apart from, I think, Pakatar. And it's one of those things where Pakatar, it's not like not seeming up for it or not seeming like his head in the game. Maybe it's, you can you can make an argument for distracted, but he's so frustrated when one of the West Ham players is down and the referee stops it. Uh, I he, he, Every time he makes a misplaced pass, you can see the frustration in him, the way he reacts to it. But it's just a case of like, just keep it calm. Pass it around a little bit. Do some short passing. None of this fancy stuff. And then eventually you sort of work your way into it and you go forward from there. We're looking again at that potential penalty shout, but it was just 
that's a basic 50-50 to me, although again, after the last couple of games, God knows what 50-50s are anymore. Ooh, it's Maverick Panos who goes down. Maverick Panos is the West Ham player who's down. He looked like he just absolutely crumbled. He looks in absolute agony. Um, it wasn't a dangerous foul or anything. He looked to land a bit awkwardly on his ankle while running at full speed. And Kurt Azum is currently warming up. And it wouldn't surprise me if he comes on here because Maverick Panos looks in absolute agony. He's been off for a couple of games. I genuinely love and hate him in equal measure. Uh, I think he knows he's going to see it in levels of drops. Well, he's, I mean, he's not there yet, but I don't, I don't, I think he's just out of form. I, I think we're out of form. Like, like I say, there's, there's these little sprouts of form coming back, but it's just not been there entirely. And I think we've come up against teams in a row where they've been very happy to sort of just get very, to get very nippy, you know, leave, leave something on us all the time, you know, be it on Pakatar, be it on Kudus. And I think, you know, he's come back off an injury, sort of come back off these yellow cards. It's very stop starty. We're not not rocking and rolling. I don't know. It's just not it's just not clicking for him. I think we may be looking for something more than it is. Maverick Panis is currently testing out his ankle just to see how it feels. He's probably gonna come back on, but it's a very scary moment. The, 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 the drop ball hasn't happened yet. Um, but yeah, I think we're maybe looking for um, maybe looking for something where it, where it's quite simple. I just don't think he's in form right now. Afternoon nap. I guess I wish I could. Here's the thing, right? I'm at a stage now, and this is this is completely irresponsible for me, and no one else should do this. Right? I just stayed up so long. I'm just like, do you know what? Just stay up until the next evening. It's fine. Where this boy work? But I just stay up, and I shouldn't do it, and I do it way too often. But I'm just gonna stay up for as long as I can at this point. And then I'll probably crash at like seven and then just sleep and don't set alarms. Just wake up when I wake up. If I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, great. If I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, great. If I wake up at, you know, three o'clock in the morning, that's fine. You know, just sleep. That's where we're at now. It's bad. That's bad. Those bad choices in life. I, I disagree with you, Dean. I, uh, Dean Hodges, I should say. I, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I, I respect I respect what you're saying, and I do think David Moyes' policy of playing the same always a good opportunity for Fulham, cut out by Mavra Panos, who's back up, and he's moving a bit gingerly, but he at least did well on that one. Uh, but I, 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 I think there are positives and negatives to the way David Moyes' team selections Um I, dis I disagree with your statement, but I don't disagree with the way you... F I don't disagree with... Like, I think I think you're saying a lot of things that I would agree with. It's just the actual finality of it. I think I disagree with, if that makes sense. Not really. I'm saying a lot of words there, and none of them are really adding up to what I'm trying to say. Basically, what I'm saying is I don't think he's flogged them to death, but I do think there is issues when you decide to play a singular 11 in that people will get tired. Um, I don't think it's like... As f I don't think it's as emphatic as people are suggesting, but I do believe that it's a, I do believe that it's a problem. But on the positives, there are positives too as well that people don't talk about. Ones that let's be real, I don't need to get into because I can barely string a sentence together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, right? Uh, listen, I just sat here working all night, and I didn't even do that much. ADHD, man, it's a powerful drug. I didn't even do that much. I just sat here staring at the screen like anything was happening. It's just the brain wasn't working. It just wasn't happening. Just bad. Tec yeah, technically me too, yeah. Technically me too. It was more sun it was more Saturday during the day because of how late I was going to bed, but technically Friday night. Pakatar tries to play the ball forward somehow kept in there i'm not entirely certain how and this is a great opportunity danny ings oh the pass danny 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 somehow the pass from pakatar stays in somehow the ball manages to find its way to danny ings and all it needed was just a nice pass i mean all, all it needed the entire time was a nice pass but um Is there anything happening in the game? Honestly, bro, no.
<laughs> I'll tell you when they do. I'll tell you when they do. Right now, West Ham are pressing relatively well. Fulham's dangerous passing games come back to bite them in that we've won a throw-in. But it, unfortunately, it's a throw-in in a dangerous place and not um, getting a high turnover like I'd want because this would just be us giving the ball away. Alvarez looking a bit snappy into the box, but can't find it. Ball prowess, that's a nice cross-field diag to find... Vladimir Sufal whips it in. Michelantonio fighting for it. Can't quite get there ahead of Tosin Arrodobay. Leno drops the ball for a second and manages to snap on it. Not bad. Again, stretched, but not bad. We're just so stretched in this game. We're just so stretched. You hate to see it. I'm like you, all like, oh my else. Tunes, best design work. Yeah, same. My brain doesn't fully switch on until like 2 o'clock in the morning, if it was like sometimes. <laughs> Oh, Fulham coming forward again. Willian on the counter-attack. He's got a Wobi with him. Surely that's two. Fabianski with the save. How, how Iwobi has missed another chance. How Fulham haven't scored that, I will never know. But Fabianski does really well. Ball over the top. Mavropanos, just another awful decision on his behalf. Completely misses it. Coming out, gives him an opportunity. He just do not need. And Willian finds a Wobi who has the space, who has the time, and tries to just slot it in on the opposite side. And Fabianski, it's a good save, to be fair. Wobi shouldn't have given it any opportunity, but it's a nice save to get down nice and fast to stop it big. It's going to be a corner to Fulham, resulting from our right-hand side. Ing Swinger from Pereira whips it in, headed away. Mavro Panos is having a woeful game, by the way. Back to Awobi as Fulham. Again, just tried to tempt us out. Just tried to tempt us out. Yeah, there just haven't been numbers for it, Cyberpunk. I, there probably has been, but I've just missed it. But well, I'm just haven't quite seen the numbers. War Prowse finds Kudus, who wastes it wins it back thankfully but jesus christ back to sufal good cross here would be nice nope first man we'll take the corner we'll take the corner get thomas suchek on right now in a second <laughs> get him on now for this exact moment this is where we need him stupid from kudus but he wins the ball back and gets the ball forward to kudus and uh, sorry to sufal and again honestly the cross was going to be bad regardless but it should have been at least we get the cross and we get the corner our right hand side Corner, our fifth of the game. Going to be an outswing from James Will Prowse, I think. I haven't seen the wide yet, so I don't know whether or not. Yeah, James Will Prowse outswinger. Ooh, I tell you what, that was a that was a that was an absolutely lightning corner, and I mean, I do not understand how that's not ended up in a net. He is he has put maximum maximum curve and just like fired it low and hard across the box and somehow it bounces off it looks like three west ham players there and none of them can get any sort of touch onto it in a direction that hurt that helps none of them seem massively aware of it i don't know how that's not gone in fulham defending well sat deep emerson wide on the left hand side picks it back up finds it back to alvarez back to pakatar in that half space looking for the cross in big deflection Alvarez battles for the ball with Calvin Bassey. Awobi's next to him. Tries to turn them both. I like the idea. It was never going to work. I like the idea. Bassey lays it short to Awobi and Fulham get a throw in, disappointingly off it. And they're going to be able to deal with the pressure there. How does that not go in? Is VR looking at that? Is that what I just heard? The ball gets whipped across. It's around the back of Mikel Antonio. Someone else is there. It bounces in and it seems to bounce off the... Uh... It bounces off two separate Fulham players. It bounces off Tossin's arm. But I, for me, it's not a, not a handball. But it, it, it bounces off his arm. Mavropanos is coming off. Uh, and he's, he's clearly not comfortable. Uh, in a game in which we're already struggling with injuries... To see um, another one come off is not useful. But Mavropanos comes on and Zuma comes on in his place. No, nah, never happened. Always arms on his Yeah, that's my opinion. I, I think they said they were checking it, but it seems to be over. It seems to be over now. So no, no pen. So Fulham take the uh, short 
short goal kick and then boot it long after trying to drag people out a little bit. Pacata, oh, Pacata goes down. Heavy from Pereira. He's going to get a yellow for his troubles. I think he kind of had... I think he kind of had the uh, right to go for it to an extent. Let's have a look at it again. It's a heavy touch from Pereira. And it is a wild stretch. He has the right to go for it. But the way he goes for it is reckless. He, I think he does get the ball away. But his foot... He dives in. It's a heavy first touch from... Uh, it's a heavy first touch from... <sighs> It's a heavy first touch from Pereira, and he's charging after the ball to try and get it before uh, Pakatar can get control of it. And again, like I say, he had full right to go for it, given what happened, but his legs, sort of, his studs come up, and he sort of spreads out like that. It's very reckless. It's very, very reckless. Holy hell. Like he, No, you're missing what I'm saying. He has the right to go for it, but the way he goes for it is wrong. It's at least a yellow. I've just... so So... Kez said, well done, Gonzo. And my brain went, oh, I should check my thing because I didn't know what you were talking about. Gonzo has won. Congratulations to Gonzo on winning <laughs> on uh, Match Bingo. Gonzo has just won 50 quid. <laughs> yeah, I've just, yeah, I can see this now. Robert Singleton saying, Gonzo, does he know? Has he said this anywhere? I should tell him if he doesn't know. But yeah, it goes goes through, carries on with where we're at. Ball played over the top is going to be a corner. Insane. Gonzo's just won. How am I the only one of the three of the Hammer Strap people who hasn't won yet? I'm fuming. <laughs> but congratulations. Gonzo, if you see this, congratulations. Fuming. Fuming. Well, Gio 120, Gonzo 150. Does that mean I'm on for my 100? Who knows? Andreas Pro, to take the result in corner. Outswinger from the right hand side. Whips it in. Oh my God, it could and probably should be 2 0. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. It's Paulinho who ends up hitting it. First time, bounces up. Pereira whips it in and he's in so much space and he just, he's in open space and he just strokes it first time. It bounces just before him and he's not, it doesn't, it's not over the ball and it bounces up and over. Zoom, who's now on playing it to the two foul. I've just DM. I just, I just messaged Gonzo. Just sent my text saying congrats. <laughs> we're about to make. I think we're about to. I think we're getting two subs ready. One of them's Thomas Suchek. I missed what the first person was. I missed who the first person was. Looking at a bench, who could it be? Because I missed who it was. Johnson? It's probably Johnson. It's probably Johnson and Suchek. Again, going in on Munez. Yeah, I think that's probably a yellow card for Aguerd as well, to be fair. I oh, know, right? Earthy looks like he's... Earthy's half stripped off. He's just, He's got the bib on. Yeah, it's Johnson, by the way. Sure, please, I mean, bingo, please, I mean, bingo. That's what I was going to, that's what I was going to do, but I completely forgot. Yeah, Johnson and Suchek are coming on. Earthy is, um, 
Earthy was semi stripped off. Sufal at White Kudus wins the throw-in. Yeah, not that he not like he looked like he was ready, ready to come on, but he sort of had everything ready apart from having a bib on. Compared to say corner, he was still in a tracksuit. Do you know what I mean? Jesus with the two pounds. Thank you very much. Sir. Massively appreciate it. Helps out the channel massively. The can Antonio turns. He's at one left hand side. Just like a days ago. Just like a days ago. Jesus, I'm putting your name in the top thing now. Just silly from us constantly. What's up there now? Sir, thank you very much. Fulham going back to their usual terrifying passing out from the back movements that have just completely done us today. Look for the long ball over the top. Zuma easily controls it. Could have looking to try and control it and go. Played in towards the box. Sufal getting a bit handsy. Over the top towards Willian on the far side. Perot looks to try and dribble his way through. And the, the flick across is easily collected by Fabianski. Yeah, Suchek and Johnson are ready to come on. They're just waiting for the opportunity. Antonio picks it up wide on the left-hand side. Pakatar looks to try and swivel his way in. Finds Danny Ings. Good opportunity. Tries too much. Just hit the ball. When the ball comes to you, bro. Just, just get it. Get it. Pakatar spins his man beautifully. Finds Danny Ings. One touch. Smash it. Doesn't. It's on your weak foot. I appreciate that. But just put your laces for it. Why are you wasting time trying to turn Calvin Bassey for? Just absolutely wallop it with yellow foot. If it goes high and wide, it goes high and wide. Just go for it, man. Why are we wasting time trying to craft better opportunities than that? Anyway, it's going to be a corner regardless. Wide on the left-hand side, James will pass to take it. And swinger to the back post. Header comes down. Saves. Pollock can't make it happen. Kudus, nice little swivel. Nicely done from Kudus. Takes a pass to... He's now in a dead end. He's going to have to do something special from here. Ends up playing a back pass. Whips in. Zuma can't get ahead to it. Danny Ings. Just puts his foot at that time, but bouncing up. Leaning back. Never happening. Never happening. So we're going to get those subs. Uh, annoyingly, I'm probably going to miss them because my thing is glitched. So if you could tell me who the subs are, that would be beautiful. I think it's Suchek and Johnson. My guess would be for Sue Fowl and James Will Prowse would be my guess. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mikel Antonio come off at some point as well. But yeah. Bro came with the orbital, bro. It was wild. It was wild. This corner is with him on. Look, listen. Corner is just not very good. <laughs> the sooner we all admit that, the better. The sooner we all admit that Corne's done our head, the better. No, I, I, want him to, I wanted him to be good. And he was before his injury. But his injury happened and he's done our head. So, so. Come on, NWITS. Trini, 100% agree. How many touches do you need to shoot? It's the bro, just get them. Just, when you get the opportunity, just wallop it. So please, I'm eating pin, but I'm starting to lose my voice now as well. I can feel it. Come on. Yeah, I know you can't find the video. I'm aware of that. It's one thing I can say. Getting a belt ASAP. Again, if the, it's, it's, the way we try to do it is if there's three people within a close space of time, then we do it. Otherwise, every time a, a bell call happens, we'll just be doing it straight away, right? But there's been a lot of calls over the over the over the time. That probably means it should happen. It's just not been condensed, you know. 
There you go. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a condensed it's been a condensed cooler. It's been a condensed cooler. Right, let's end that one and get on to the next one. Was this actually going to load this time? That'd be nice. 1.1k people voted in that poll. 39% said West Ham win. 36% said Fulham win. 24% said draw. I'm surprised. I would have thought more people would have said draw for that. I'm surprised. Right, Bell. Yes, you know. No messing. We don't. We don't need fancy stuff here. Let's just get. Let's just get these results in, shall we? There we go. I will give it. Um, where are we at? I will give it until seventy-two and a half ish. Give it the ninety seconds. Who did Johnson and Suchet come on for, by the way? Because I still currently can't see. I'm trying to figure out a way of seeing, but I currently cannot. It's 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 annoying me. It's annoying. Me. Two 0 James Will Prowse. Two 0 game over. Oh Christ. Well, I look forward to seeing it eventually. I'm kind of I'm kind of happy I can't see it right now. It's two 0 apparently. Um if anyone can say what happens, that'd be nice. <laughs> oh, I've just seen it. I've just seen it. I've just seen it. Oh, Christ. I just heard West Ham getting their mid midfield in a muddle or something like that. 2-0. Uh, Fulham, score. You love to see it. You really do. I should have gone with my gut. My gut said 1-0 Fulham. I should have gone with it. I don't know why I didn't. I usually go with my gut. I don't know why I didn't today. I went with my heart. And I'm not sure why. Pakatar tries to dribble through three people, gets tackled. And then Fulham, direct as you like. Moyes ball us. Yet again. Pereira to Munez. Finds a Wobi. Beautiful pass through to Pereira. Everyone stands still. I need to take a second to calm down. <laughs> I need to take a second to calm down. 2 0 Fulham. CBA. C and then a B and then an A. Pereira's coming off for Fulham at the same time. So who was it? It was. Hakatar, by the way, had an absolute shocker. I'm, I'm just done. And I'm done with other people as well, but I'm just. I will be coming off for Cordova Reed. And Wilson coming on for Pereira for Fulham. Wilson and the Cordova Reed. It's Wall Pass for Suchek and Ashi and Ben Johnson for Sufa. Looks like it. Uh, Suchek. Johnson, there we go. Don't worry about Oh, yeah, the bell pole. I forgot about that. <laughs> forgot about that. Well, 66% of people said yes, and we are we are a democracy around here, so I will do it regardless, but I'll wait until the upper... Well, Leno's just holding the ball right now, so this is going to necessitate... I'll go try to do it now. Give me a sec. I'm going to find the bell. I'm going to find the bell. Say fine. I'm going to find Bell acquired. It can probably only bring us sad times at this point, but Bell acquired. Jesus Christ, they almost just scored a third. They almost just scored a third. I was like, as I said, I'll go find a bell. As I walked out, 
I was like, I was like, oh, why do I say that as if I have to find it? They were in genuinely a different part of the fridge where I usually put them, so I did have to find them. Right, loud part down, silent snack. And I'll be honest with you, like Kezzy said not to bother, I'll be honest with you, right? Probably for the best, but I'm hungry. And I want something to do that's not watching this match. Okay, here we go. That was really difficult, that one. Johnson tries to whip it in, banged away. That one was difficult to eat for some reason. Oh, well, that's that part of the day done. That's that part of the day done. Pakatar tries to lay it in, fails again. Shocked. Shot. William plays it out wide to Duckle Dover. Reed completely misses the first touch. It still maintains with Fulham. William takes it. William takes a shot at the flex off someone. And Curtis does really well to keep that one in. Fair play to Lad. He does really well to keep that one in. He then has no option, so he passes it back. But, you know, he did really well to keep it in. Chris, how are you, sir? You alright? Hope you're well, bro. Elaine's coming strong as per usual. The perf... Which one are they? Or are you talking about the Young Bucks? Because the CM Punk thing I have recently. I don't know which ones you mean. I don't know who you mean, Elaine. Good to see you as per usual. I'm slumped, ladies and gentlemen. You know it's one of those times where I've got to the slump. Rip Superstar Billy Graham. What a username. Even a draw would have been okay. Like I said, I would have taken a draw with a good performance. Georgia, if he looks like he's about to come on. With, with uh, I mean... I mean, it's kind of shocking, if we're being honest about it. Like, genuinely, I'm a bit shocked. I, I Like I said, I would have done it at half-time, but I, I'm shocked, genuinely. Ben Johnson just runs into a dead end. Emerson with the ball. Antonio. Still hanging on to the ball despite being pushed by four separate people. Gets tripped over. It's going to be a free kick. Commentator just said how different would it have been if Antonio took that shot. It took that goalie opportunity he had at the beginning of the game. Lane, you're running right. Lane, you're running right. I was thinking about Tony Carney but then what Fulham fans think of him now. Because it must be so different compared to compared to a year ago or two years ago when they were getting relegated and they all hated them. But I don't know if it'd be different now. I don't know. I was thinking about that once. Anyway. Emerson to play the ball in from the free kick. Does. No one can get their head onto it apart from tossing it or a bio. Oh, could have managed to keep it in. Nicely done. Good opportunity to do something here. Nope. Cross hits the man directly in front of him and he loses out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen there. Fulham looking for that counter attack. It doesn't happen, so they're gonna try and play it as well. It's bro, they just their back part, their back passes are wild. They are wild. 
It's like watching what we should have done from the beginning. It's crazy. They like, try to get forward, and if it doesn't happen, they just turn around and pass it back as far as they can. If it's to the goalkeeper, it's to the goalkeeper. If it's to the right back, it's to the right back. doesn't matter. They, they pass it back as far as they can. And then, it just, then they just reset and go their way from there. It's very it's smart. I like it. Our fans would not be able to deal with it, but I quite like it. It's, I mean, it's moist ball. It's moist ball, but just with a little bit of like, a little bit of like, it's like one step beyond it. Where they go, okay, if we can't break you down, then we have an idea of what we're doing. Whereas when we can't break people down, we don't really know what we're doing. Crazy to watch. Yeah, because there's no point in putting anyone else on there because they ain't getting on it. So. <laughs> you might as well. I don't really care. Mubama I care about. Dr. Tobi gets a yellow card. Mubama I care about. Corner couldn't give less of a crap, whatever. It makes no difference in my life. But Mubama, I feel like, deserves more of a chance. Um, and he clearly lost faith with him in the beginning of the season. Dr. Tobi gets a yellow card for... Yeah, it was probably maybe a foul, but not a yellow for me. But I mean, I don't really care. Antonio off earth on. Antonio did not look very happy about it, but there we go. Uh, to be fair, he started clapping after. Having a look at that opportunity once more. That is an, was such an awful miss. That is such an awful miss. Earthy comes on. Unfortunately, there's definitely no way we'll score now because Danny Ings is going to be up front in a 4-3-2-1. In a 4-2-3-1 even. So that ain't happening. So check finds Kudus. He's got Earthy on outside. He decides to go for the shot. Drags it just wide. <sighs> Solid fortunes. Good. I like it. I like it. But I'm going to make a couple more subs. Palini, a nice little cross-field pass, finds Robinson, has Willian ahead of him, finds him. Look to try and get it forward at all, but under pressure, I'll tell you what, Kudus has fought for that. Kudus is fighting for that, and he's come away with it beautifully done by Kudus. Fair play, very, very nicely done. Poor pass, but, well, I mean, it was accurate, but it was a crap pass to watch. Earthy with his first touch, first time pass, gets involved. Pardon me, gets involved a second time. Looking to try and flick it around and create. We're going to see, a, I think that's a Dharma and Raul Jimenez come on in a second for Fulham. Earthy getting involved, really nicely done. Good work. Ball playing, moving into space. Ball across, looking for Danny Ings from Johnson. Doesn't quite work out. Bassey gets it away. It's going to be a corner. Nicely done. Very nicely done from George Earthy there. Just picks up. Runs it around, interestingly. Playing some nice little one-twos, creating a bit of space, nice pass and movement in a way that's not completely like a headless chicken like the rest of them are doing for the rest of the game. I like it. I like it. It's going to be a corner off to West Ham. It's going to be, I think, an in-swinger from the right-hand side. Kudus can't... It just It was awful. Let's just move on. Johnson, back out to Kudus on the right-hand side in the corner quadrant. Looking to take on his man. He's got Palini ahead of him. Willian just ahead of him as well. Whipped in, headed away from... Fulham once more. I'll tell you what, Earthy went flying after that. He's been completely flattened by um, Alvarez. And he's gone down and he's barely moved. And Alvarez like started raising his hands and waving them to try and get him on. He got completely clattered. Completely clattered. And you can see Sue Fowl and Cresswell looking at the screen to try and figure out what happened. Earthy went charging after it. Alvarez jumps up and tries to tries to get the ball away. 
and come forward with it, but he completely clatters George Earthy, who goes down and just doesn't just does not move. Um, and I don't know who was standing over him. Someone was standing over him. There's a the the stretcher has come across. We're skipping over, but yeah, George Earthy is down. Um, he still seems to be down. I think he's going to have to come off. The little golf cart with the stretcher on it has come across. And I think they're getting ready to stretcher him off. So I think George Earthy is going to come off. Yeah, Alvarez clattered with him. And there was talk about potentially it was the way he landed, apart from, apart from uh, as, as opposed to the connection that was made with Alvarez. Yeah, people are saying, yeah, the, what do you call it? The commentator is just saying that he hit his head on the pitch as he fell. Because he didn't move. He looked spark out. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't move at all. Yeah, and the stretcher is fully out right now. So he's, so he's going to get stretched off. And if he, and if he was unconscious, um, then he's not going to come back on. Uh, have we used our three? We might have used. I don't know, but we might have, yeah, so. We might have, yeah, so. Oh, no, no, we don't seem to. Oh, because if it's a head injury, then it doesn't count, right? So Cornet looks like he's coming on. Cornet looks like he's going to come on. Well, George Earthy, having come on and done really well, looks like he's going to have to come straight back off here, unfortunately. Uh, that's That sucks and it's horrendous. Everyone's just sort of standing around at the moment watching it happen. Um, and hopefully he's okay, but Maxwell Corney is about to come on. But yeah, if it's a concussion, I don't think it counts towards the three gap or whatever. I don't know how it works, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're saying it now. He's going to be introduced as a concussion sub. Kevin Nolan and Corne in deep discussion. Yeah, because I think if you use your three, but it's a concussion, you can still use one. I don't think it counts. So that's what they just said. He'll be introduced as a concussion sub. So so Earthy is going to come off and he'll come on. Although it, although it doesn't look like he's going to need the uh, stretcher anymore. Thankfully, they seem to be less ready with the stretcher than they were. So at least that's mildly positive, but yeah, that sucks. That sucks. Came on, was doing really well, ran after it like full headlong and just got absolutely clattered by Alvarez, smashed his head against the floor and that was it. Fulham have still got their subs as well. Uh... With Broya and Adama Traore, who are both going to be coming on as well. Aaron Cresswell's having conversation with the. Aaron Cresswell's having conversation as well. It's a, uh, William, I agree, mate. I, I think we should give him. I think we should give him a contract. I don't know if it should be seventy k, but he, we, he should get a new contract. He should get a new contract. He deserves it. He needs to stay. <laughs> so he does, and he deserves it. But you know, Earthy has gone on a stretcher now and is going to be driven off the pitch. Applause around the London Stadium as Earthy goes off.
That sucks. That really, really sucks. Eleven minutes of stoppage time have just been announced. And we're going to see Maxwell Cornet come on for George Earthy. Fulham are going to make their two subs as well at the same time. And it's Willian coming off for Adama. And Broya, I assume, for Mun Muniz. Willian comes off for Adama. Yeah, Muniz for Broya. So that'll be all the subs. With 10 minutes to go, plus whatever it'll be. So we've got nine and a half minutes left of the stoppage time that was allotted to begin with, but it will definitely go on for longer than that. Drop ball happens, Fulham come away with the ball, and we move on with our lives. But yeah, that's uh, that's that really sucks for George Murphy. Came on, was looking really good, and yeah, stress. Right, Corne, this is your chance. First thing he does, foul someone. This is your chance, bro. And it's not just two minutes. You've got like 10 plus at this point. So, that's the chance. Um, the fact Moyes picked a youth player over him probably says all that needs to be said. But here we go. I don't think he's the right man for the job regardless. But, you know, we move. Head of forward. Bonnie gets a touch on his head for it, but can't really direct anything. Gets bundled over as he goes. Big, long ball over the top. Cut out from Kurt Zuma. Bro, I was trying to run onto it. Controlled down by uh, the Dover Reed. I'm trying to remember who's even on the pitch for Fulham at this point. There's so many changes they've made. Easy, easy. Two, uh, one, every, one every two minutes is light work for this guy. Does That does assume, though, that we'd have the ball and actually play a through ball and they wouldn't be deep enough to stop it being an offside, which may be the only thing that stops him. We can agree to disagree on Moyes and Corner. We can agree to disagree on Moyes and Corner. His injury ruined him. Let's be real about it. Zuma plays into the path of Johnson. Looking for the one-two with Kudus. The ball back to Johnson was ambitious. But Bassi just doesn't try to risk it this time and just plays it out. We're going to get a throw in anyway. Of course I consider it a chance for Corne. He's got 10 plus minutes on the pitch. This is my problem with Maxwell Corne. No, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. The, the firewalls are down and I need to stop. <laughs> the firewalls are down and I need to stop. If this isn't a chance for Corne, then we should have just not brought him on and played 10 men. It has to be a chance for Corne. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it because the, 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 the filter isn't there. Do you know what I mean? Pinged in. Leno collects it. Oh, I just don't care. I don't care about Corne. Okay, here's here's the firewall is down in Brandon, right? Let's let's, let's talk about Corne. Here's the thing. Corne, when he first came, was being played by Moyes, and he looked good. He looked good. He should have got that goal against Chelsea, for example. It was happening. It was happening, and I was hyped for it. And I was like. This looks like a guy that will work in the system. We, it, it just everything added up. And then he got this horrendous injury and he had to go to France or whatever. And then all this crap happened, right? And since he's come back, he came back into the side and was getting given chances. And every time he was getting less and less chances every single time. And every single time he was playing worse and worse. And then he had one game in Europe where he played well. He came on, did well. And like the rest of the time, he's been crap. 
And I can't, you can't just look at it and go, like, ignore it. He's just been crap. Like, it sucks, but it's true. Like, I want him to be a success because I love, I, I have loved the way that guy plays and that guy for a long, long time. And when we signed him, I was hyped. And when he first playing, I was hyped. And when he first came back from injury, I was like, oh, here he goes. There's something happening. But his performances have just gone worse and worse and worse. And it's just like, what's the point? When I say it's a chance, I'm being slightly sarcastic. But at the same time, it's not the, it might be 90 plus minutes, but it's 90 plus minutes with 11 minutes of stoppage time, plus whatever would be added on anyway, because we didn't get back underway until 90 seconds into the half. So I'm like, something, just make something happen. Like outside of it, yeah, I don't know. But, ooh, ooh, Pakatar's about to get sent off and he is fuming because he just got a high knee to the face. That was, but that's, that's, that should be potentially two red cards there, one from each. One from each. Pakatar was furious. He he was battling for the ball. I don't know who it was. Palini has come across. Maybe it was him who apologized to him. But it was a high knee there. It was like a flipping knee strike. Dude jumped off. Pakatar gets a yellow card, which I think he's probably a little bit lucky for, if I'm being honest. Yeah, he gets a high knee from Palini and then just absolutely sees red and goes for um. It's not high knee, it's a scratch in the face. It looked like a high knee, but Pelinia jumps off and his hand comes down and Pakatar just completely loses it and goes for him. He's having a bad couple of weeks. He's in a he's in a, he's in an absolute state, Pakatar. He's in an absolute state. That should have been a red card. It should have been a red card. He you know you're I think you're I, I think you're I think you are right. Don't get me wrong. I do agree with that. I feel I feel like he's he's in this bad run and I feel like he's just completely let it go to his head at this point. Because these these things keep happening these specific incidents he's lucky that should have been a red that like honestly just should have been a red because there was no there was no thoughts we're going to get another sub to read read for palinia because that was there was no attempt to play the ball whatsoever he just snatched that and he just went for it should he should have been sent off they probably should have, don't get me wrong, Palina should have been maybe seen something as well because that was dumb, but yeah. Yeah. This, a part of me feels like we're just missing a captain. I've been, like, like, I'm not saying a captain would solve these issues, right? I'm not saying that. But when I see someone like Pakatar who's so, so vitally important to us and he's just, his head is just gone in these situations... And I just look it around and I think, where is the person who steps up and sort of takes that responsibility of just telling people to calm down, moving forward with the game, sort of trying to make things happen like that? There's just no one. There's no one who leads by example like Declan Rice did. I never thought Declan Rice was a good captain in terms of like his like vocal stuff. I thought he was relatively petulant, but he led by example, at least on the pitch for the majority of the time. Last season was a bit iffy, but he led by the he led by the example. And you don't have uh, noble who not only leads by example in that sense but also has that like like leader quality to him and we just don't have it you know and when you're in these situations when your best player by such a by such a distance pakatara is our best player don't get me wrong kudis is a wonderful wonderful beautiful player but i genuinely think pakatara is beyond even him in a fairly safe manner and he is just having these moments of just pure stupid petulant outbursts like that where is the guy who comes across to him and just grabs him and goes, stop, zone, zone, the hell, zone the hell in right now. It's just not there. It's just not there. It's, it sucks. We're missing, no, we, I agree, man. That's what I think it is. Enjoy your gardening, Neil. Enjoy the gardening. <laughs> There's a joke about blocks and something but i can't be asked to make it enjoy software shot from could have read from range oh sorry it was dharma from range that's my opinion on it steve i, I know like i'm not saying it's a, it, it would solve the issue 100 percent of it but you know I feel like you we've just been missing that the entire season. He's not different enough. Lee, I'd say this. This is my opinion on Silver, right? Ball over top, Corne charging after it, nicely done. 
Almost won a corner, almost won the ball. It was, it was good work to try and get there. Um, here's my thing about Silva. Would I take him? Yes. But realistically, I don't think he is different enough from David Moyes to satiate the fan base. I think the fan base would be happy that Moyes was... I think the, the, the Moyes out section of the fan base, for example, would be happy that Moyes was gone. And I think there is maybe 50% of them who are just like anyone but David Moyes. So like in that sense, yeah, Silva would be accepted. But I think actually from a stylistic standpoint, he's too similar to Moyes to really be different enough to make it happen, you know? Would I take it? Yes, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a bit different. I think it's a bit different from some other people. The eleven minutes is up, but again, we did we didn't start the we didn't start the game again until ninety seconds after ninety seconds into added time anyway. So potentially got another minute and a bit to go here. Ball over the top, looking out wide for Ben Johnson. Collects it, looks to take on Adama. He's never going to beat him for pace, so he turns back, finds Suchek, recycles possession quickly to Pakatar, out wide to Emerson. Poor pass from Maxwell Corne, looking for the 1-2 with Pakatar. He was ambitious. He was an ambitious player. I don't know why we tried it. Ball over the top. Borea gets the control down, stepping up to Aguerd, who stops him nicely. It's good defending there. Good defending. Remember, G will be live with a full match review straight after this on the channel. So subscribe, hit that bell notification button if you haven't already. So he'll be live in a few moments' time. Yeah, I know, saying so it's a nightmare. Came on, did like some nice stuff. I was like, oh, here we go. Bosh, done. Sucks. There is the full-time whistle. Um, full-time whistle is 2-0, Fulham. Um, they moist balled us. Simple as that. Happens. Happens will continue to happen. Whenever the, the trend continues, whenever we go up against teams who play boys ball against us we get got sucks but it is the way it is um geo will be live in a few moments time to give an actual in-depth discussion on the match uh so i'm going to spam that link in chat now and what i want you to do is head over there and like the video because it helps geo out a massive amount if you do that um just pushes it up rankings and algorithms and all that so if you go across there and get in there uh and like the video that would help him out massively and then continue the conversation and listen to someone who actually understands football unlike me but thank you everyone for joining appreciate your skits appreciate you hdu appreciate you uh and massive massive thank yous to wayne and uh, to judas as well because uh, it's massively massively useful uh, but there you go two now we'll be back on thursday for leverkusen Jesus Christ, God knows what's going to happen then. But do go over onto the full time review right now and uh, like that video because that will help Geo out a huge, huge amount. West Ham, nil. Bottom two. Cheers, everyone. Peace out. Bye.